Okay, members, welcome back. And uh, the open business here. We're moving on to agenda 14. Now, the notice of motion. So, the first notice of motion tonight is uh, Councillor Ferguson. And I see you have a seconder by uh, Councillor Cusack. So, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mayor, I wanted to bring this motion on the back of the animal welfare presentation we had from our local animal rescue charities. They had raised with me their extreme disappointment that the hunting of wild mammals with dog leg legislation didn't pass the second stage. Northern Ireland is the only part of the United Kingdom will fight this ban, despite widespread public support for the ban. Mayor, I wanted to keep this motion relative to our city and district, and here is where I have had many people coming to me wanting this ban. Local schools and their students personally lobbying me to ban the hunting of mammals because even these school children understand that it's inhumane and a barbaric practice. A ban on hunting with dogs in Northern Ireland is long overdue. I strongly believe that animals being ripped to shreds by a pack of dogs for human enjoyment cannot be considered a sport. I wanted to show pictures of several dogs from our council area, who, which I've actually forwarded to all members today, um, who have been impacted by this cruel practice. We've seen recently the harrowing story of the lab being attacked by five other dogs this week. Dogs which have been identified by CCTV as hunting dogs and the way they looked and the way they attacked the lab. This attack, as was said, they've gone on for 15 minutes. Just think of that. 15 minutes this lab was subjected to extreme pain being shredded by other dogs. This lab is yet to be named, but is currently undergoing major treatment and possibly could need his legs amputated. But Mayor, these other dogs in the pictures that I sent were also used to hunt, all who have just been as badly hurt and been forced to go out after mammals. These dogs usually end up at our local rehoming centres and are told to take, basically the rehoming centres are told, take them now or they'll be shot because they won't hunt anymore. They just give up because they're subjected to being harmed whilst doing it. And these are the milder pictures that I have. There have been several graphic photographs of the of um, the lab that have obviously been online, but there's also a terrier he has seen. He has had to have his jaw reconstructed because he's constantly pushed down burrows to attack badgers, and the badgers have tried to defend themselves. Mayor, these are not beloved pets enjoying a so-called sport with their families. These are dogs being abused and thrown away when they're no more used to their handlers. They're being hurt as much as some animals that they're sent to kill. Mayor, lastly, before I do put this to the floor, I want to send my thanks to everyone who's wrong, donated or even travelled down to try and find the lab this week. The much needed money raised will go a long way to helping re rehabilitate this lab and any money left over will help the other dogs and animals rescued. So just to reaffirm to me, this has just reaffirmed to me that the public do not support this type of hunting and they support a ban. So tonight, Mayor, I hope, hope our council will also stand with us and vote to show our support in banning the hunting of animals with dogs. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Ferguson. Councillor Cusack. Um, thank you, Chair, and many thanks to Councillor Ferguson for bringing this very emotive uh, subject to Council. I and my SDLP colleagues were shocked to see this, this legislation fall at the first hurdle in the Assembly in December. And I believe, as Councillor Ferguson already said, the majority of the people here in the city and district did also. And as an animal lover myself, I was asked by some constituents why other parties, such as Sinn Féin and some in the DUP, with the notable exception of the late Christopher Stalford, had voted against this legislation, which would essentially have protected against cruel practices such as uh, hunting and fox hunting in particular here. I couldn't explain the reason why, but I have, haven't since looked into objections against this very valid bill. And given my limited speaking time, I'm going to refer only to a very long and detailed letter to, to John Blair from the Countryside Alliance Ireland. Uh, the letter stated that the legislation did not understand the subject fully. It lacked detail, allowed for loopholes and misused terminology, such as the difference between hunting and flushing by dogs. These points, which in the SDLP's view could easily have been addressed and corrected, such as the legislative passage. I also found the very obvious omission of reference to hunting as a sport enjoyed by humans, where the letter preferred to use a reference to, and I'm quoting, quote, wrong quote, impact on rural communities, which was not specified. Another point the letter made suggested that, quote unquote, a kill by dogs as being swift and certain and not necessarily any worse 
uh, than any alternative. And as Rachel's also said, there uh, the the recent posts from SB, uh, FBI about the the lost Labrador and the attack by a pack of hunting dogs, um, enduring the horrible injuries injuries couldn't possibly be described as swift or cruelty free, which is what those that endorse these sports maintain. Thankfully, uh, the dog is now being cared for and is receiving medical treatment. Uh, Chair, to conclude, personally, I have never understood the thrill or pleasure anyone could get from a sport or practice which involves abusing or killing, killing animals for entertainment. Like it or not, they are sentient beings. As, as Sorry, a Sorry, please, how could you bring your remarks to their close, please? Indeed, we should be fighting to protect them and not protecting those fighting them. We need to get our priorities right. We need to get the legislation right, and we need to do the right thing by supporting this motion today and any future motion in the assembly. Thank you. Thank you, for Councillor Kusak. Uh, Councillor Fleming. Thank you, new mayor. And just to be very clear, Sinn Féin is as opposed to the unnecessary infliction of cruelty to animals, and 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 that. Regard, we welcome the subject common day council uh, brought by Councillor Ferguson, and uh, I have submitted uh, an amendment which I sent forward earlier on. Uh, I just can't see if it's up there yet. Hi there. Thank you to the administration people. Uh, and if I could speak to Hat and, and the, the, the motion. Uh, as I say, just, just two seconds. There, right. Councillor Levin. Have you a seconder for that? Happy to second, Mayor. Councillor Duffy. Councillor Duffy, two seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Sandra. As I say, Champagne is opposed, is opposed to the unnecessary infliction of cruelty to the animals. We do also understand the importance for many in rural communities of traditional rural activities like hunting. We believe the regulation of hunting. You know, of wild animals is the best approach rather than an outright ban. The bill brought recently in the assembly was flawed. It was also rushed. And again, like a previous speaker, uh, it is imperative that we take the time to ensure that we bring forward a bill which addresses all of the issues. A significant flaw in the bill was actually clause six in the interpretation of the bill's provisions, which had a very wide scope, could potentially have led to individuals who are engaged in an appropriate activity being penalised unnecessarily. This was a real concern. And to address the flaws in the bill and to give it the full and proper consideration needed uh, would have required considerable time and attention from the Committee of Agricultural Environment and Rural Affairs, scrutiny which is badly needed. Unfortunately, the reality is that there wouldn't have been enough time for proper consultation through the committee with stakeholders and relevant organisations in the remainder of the mandate. Talking to one of our MLAs who spoke to the bill, the suggestion was that there would be a day set aside, uh, and this just in any bill isn't uh, sufficient time or space to allow people to come forward. The committee itself is currently dealing with a number of pieces of legislation including significantly two climate change bills. And one of those has been examined over seven months with over 30 sittings of the, the committee. That's at the time that they have uh, given to that particular bill. So it is in our view that the department there is best placed with its resources and expertise to lead the discussion on regulating hunting with dogs. Councillor Fleming, could you bring your remarks to a close, please? Yes, and to bring forward proposals which can effectively deal with the issues which is rightly raised about animal welfare and animal cruelty. The public as a whole and rural communities in particular need to be fully engaged and meaningful, meaningfully consulted. And to that effect, we should uh, write a letter to DERA emphasising the need for the department to take the lead on any proposals coming forward. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you, Frat. Uh, the 
Councillor Fleming on the amendment. So, uh, Alderman Kerrigan, we have an amendment up there. Do you want to speak on the amendment and substantial motion? I, I, I can touch on two on the two there, yeah. Mayor. If that's all right. Yeah, uh, go ahead. To, to be fair, the amendment. I, I have no real issue issue with the amendment there. I, I think that's that's all right. I have no real problem with it. And again, uh, Councillor Fergus' mo motion. Uh, it's, it's not far away. Uh, I do have a wee issue here. I'm just going to touch on it here. Uh, animal with the for the end of animal cruelty and improvement of animal welfare, I have no problem at all with that. And any right-minded person would be would be along those lines as well. I think to be fair, the vast majority uh, livestock and animals are are held by uh, an agricultural sector and the farmers. And, and you know, given the red tape that has to be jumped through, and and you know, the farm quality assurance scheme, red tractor scheme, various schemes there. You know, the animal welfare is to an exceptionally high standard uh, and across the agricultural sector. Mayor, the the one issue that I have there, um, and it, it it's just an 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 uh, an wording here of it, and it's uh, in regard to the the ban the hunting of mammals with dogs, and it's mentioned there in the in the third uh, and uh, the fourth paragraph as it states there. It's the, it's the term mammals is my issue. I, if uh, Councillor Ferguson is touching upon the hunting of foxes, the hunting of badgers, that end of things. I, I would personally, I'm not not fan, fond of that at all. You know, I wouldn't be fond of people out, out hunting badgers. I wouldn't be fond of dogs uh, um, pulling foxes apart. No issue with, with, with foxes uh, being uh, being shot. And as I say, there would have been a time where, where a lot of small holdings in the countryside would have had a few hens and the foxes would have been around. And again, I've seen that with, with our own fowl and, and guineas and, and peacocks and, and the fox getting in at them and, and so as I say I've seen the damage that a fox can do when hut gets in and the, just the pure massacre that hut can leave in a hen house you, you know but again that's not what we're on about there, there is vermin control and there's methods that can be used but uh, Mayor my issue is, is, is the mammal term there because you know I've had one there that uh, and the people have spoke to me and, uh, and I see I've looked at it there rats now Rats are designated as mammals there, and we would designate them as vermin. Are we including them in this legislation and this and this motion here? Because I have one there looked at that at one, and uh, one there whereby there was a pig farmer and he had severe oh, difficulty with rats, Sorry, which were eating bring into your his, uh, papers, please. Uh, so yeah, I'll bring it up to a conclusion now shortly. Uh, eating into his uh, uh, at the pig farm and in, in, uh, depleting his meal supplies and cost him a fortune and he had brought in three and dogs to come in and, and kill these and there was 700 rats killed by eight dogs in one day and again you know how else are you to control vermin in this regard in regards to the rats I mean if you do it with poison there's a strong chance that family pets a cat or a dog will eat it and subsequently be poisoned and I would say it's a more humane way uh, to control rats oh, but say, that's thank, thank, you, here, thank you thank you Mayor thank you Mayor Okay, Councillor O'Neill, uh, do you want to speak on the amendment or the substantial motion? Um, yeah, I think Councillor Dobbins is looking for clarity there. Just, uh, Mayor. What are you saying? Go ahead there, Councillor O'Neill. There's no point of order. There's no reason. Go ahead. That's all right. I, I'll just speak to to the to both um like we won't be supporting the amendment um i think uh i think uh, everybody was in disbelief that this legislation wasn't passed and and everybody was was really furious i think um with Sinn Féin for um for not uh for blocking uh this legislation from going through uh along with other members um of the DUP. Um and I think you know this it really like uh Councillor Ferguson has it right there for describing it as barbaric and, and inhumane uh this practice. It's 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 really not sport and it's it's despicable to enjoy uh, and facilitate the suffering um of another creature. Um and I think sometimes we find that uh, people who don't have that compassion for animals tend to not have that compassion for humans either. Um, and you know, this is important legislation. It's been passed since the early two thousands in England, Scotland, and Wales. It's it's shocking that we don't have it here. Um, and I want to thank Councillor Ferguson for for raising this formally as a notice of motion. Um, like there's far too much animal cruelty that exists in our society far far too much and we've seen it this week in the news here in the city um and it's and it's really really awful um and you know this legislation having had been passed would have sent a strong message that um 
to society as a whole that it's not acceptable um but it didn't pass and now we're seeing the consequences of it this week with that uh labrador um and there and i'm sure many other stories that haven't been told um so we won't be supporting the amendment but we will be supporting the the motion uh from councillor ferguson thanks thank you uh councillor neil uh councillor mckinney do you want to speak on the amendment uh, yes, um, just to say that uh, I'd not be, we, we will not be supporting the amendment. Just to say that I remember many, many, many years ago going to Carbilly in Ballymena to protest about live cur 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 her coursing. And uh, it was disgusting, basically. Greyhounds chasing live hers. And her is a beautiful animal and it is very sort of unique to Ireland, especially this part of Ireland. And I just couldn't believe it. And when I actually, I actually pulled a couple of boys who were walking the greyhound saying, why are you doing it? And all I got was, sure, it's a bit of crack, mate. And that was it. So uh, I find it totally barbaric and disgusting as well. And I'll not support the amendment, but I will support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, for Councillor McKinney. Uh, Councillor Gallagher on the amendment. Thank you, Mayor, for bringing this in. <clears throat> I'll not be supporting the amendment neither, and uh, for quite a number of reasons. But earlier on in this meeting, we talked about Invest NI, uh, and we talked about the disparities, particularly uh, East and West. And if we are relying on the Department of Economy to bring forward uh, proposals to uh, uh, amend that and restore that, we'll be waiting a very long time. So I think it's very rich for some friends to bring forward an amendment to say a department is best placed to bring forward proposals uh, when they know they're not. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Gallagher. Uh, Councillor Dobbins, you want some clarity? No, it's okay, um, Chair. It's been made quite clear. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dobbins. Uh, Councillor Donnelly? Well, I'll get chair and chair. Look, I, I'd like to pay tribute to Councillor Ferguson for bringing this very, very important motion before council here. Uh, you know, this isn't sport. This is a disgusting and sadistic practice. And I believe that I, I won't be supporting the amendment chair because I believe that it's passing the buck. You know, uh, it, it's kicking the can down uh, down the lane. And you know, it also is a, you know, some Fein seems to you know have different attitudes towards this type of behavior on whatever on different sides of 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 the border uh you know earlier on when we were talking about the late christopher stalford chair i was coming through the glen chain and and i had bad connection issues and i effectively just lost my train of thought you know myself and christopher stalford were poles apart regarding politics and ideals but i what i will say chair is that regarding this particular issue Christopher Stalford was 100% correct. Thank you. Okay, members, thank you, Fat. So I'm going to pass on now to John to take us a vote on the amendment. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Alderman Bresland? Yeah, against. Alderman Devaney? Against. Alderman Guy? Against. Alderman Hussey? Against. Alderman Hussey? Alderman Carrigan? Against. Okay. Alderman Carrigan? Uh, abstain. Alderman McClintock? Abstain. Alderman McCready? Against. Alderman Ramsey? Abstain. Alderman Wark? Abstain. Councillor Jason Barr? Against. Councillor Raymond Barr? Against. Councillor John Boyle? Against. Councillor Michaela Boyle? For John. Councillor Cusick? Against. Councillor Dobbins? Councillor Dobbins? Councillor Donnelly? Against. Councillor Doyle? Against. Councillor Duffy? For. Councillor Edwards? Yes. Councillor Farrell? Against. Councillor Ferguson? 
Against. Councillor Fleming. For John. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Against. Councillor Heaney. For John. Councillor Jackson. For. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Logue. For. Councillor McGinley. For John. Councillor McGowan. For John. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McGee. Sorry, was that Councillor McGuire? Thank you. Councillor McHugh. For John. Councillor McKinney. Against John. Councillor Mooney. Against. Councillor O'Neill. Against. Councillor Riley. Against. Councillor Sinai Barr. Against. Councillor Tierney. Against. Thank you, members. John, it's Councillor oh. Elvins here. Sorry, I was frozen. I'm against. Thank you. Any yeah, other members? Councillor Kiara here. I've been on for a while, and I'm against. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, John, Councillor McKeever here. I, I'm against as well. Okay. Any members, I think that's everyone at this stage. Mayor, I've recorded um, 11 for, 25 against, and four abstentions, so the amendment falls. Okay, members, the amendment falls. Move it back to the. Okay, moving back to the substantial motion. I see no further speakers on that, so I am going to pass now to Councillor Ferguson to sum up. Councillor Ferguson. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the members who spoke uh, in favour of the, the motion. I want to point out that this motion doesn't necessarily uh, pinpoint uh, my party colleague, John Blair's um, bill going through. It, it does say that it expresses disappointment of the lack of legislative progression on this, because I think this is something that we need, and we need it now. I think, you know, to say that the, there wasn't proper consultation, it was one of the biggest uh, private member bills con consulted on, with 78% of the, the public agreeing. And actually, there was a separate poll done where three in, fa in five participants already thought 61% already thought that it was illegal to hunt with wild animals using dogs here. Um, for Alderman Kerrigan, the the um, bill that was proposed would have been broad enough to cover um, deer, foxes, rabbits, minks and badgers, but it did have, uh, um, it excluded and exempted, uh, even though I don't agree with, and I understand your concerns about it, but rats or mice. Um, so that was because of understanding using the likes of um, of other options wasn't available. So, um, Mayor, I think this week, uh, you know, bef I put this motion on a, a couple of weeks back off the, the basis of the, the animal welfare um, coming to health and communities. This is something that every time I talk to someone, they agree it should be banned. It is harrowing. And just to see this lab this week come up, it, you can just see how bar barbaric this practice is. Um, I think it's time that we come in line with everywhere else and we completely ban it. And I think it's time that our council shows support and sends a strong message that we don't agree with hunting of mammals with dogs here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Ferguson. So members are going to pass now on the, the John, they took us through the, the, the vote. John. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Alderman Breslin. Abstain. Alderman Devaney. Abstain. Alderman Guy. For. Alderman Hussey. Abstain. Alderman Carrigan. Abstain, John. Alderman McClintock. Abstain. Alderman McCready. For the motion. Alderman Ramsey. 
Abstain. Alderman Wark. Abstain. Councillor Jason Barr. Four. Councillor Raymond Barr. Four. Councillor John Boyle. Four. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Against. Councillor Carr. Four. Councillor Cusick. Four. Councillor Dobbins. Four, John. Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Doyle. Four. Councillor Duffy. Against. Councillor Edwards. Four. Councillor Farrell. Four. Councillor Ferguson. Four, John. Councillor Fleming. Against, John. Councillor Gallagher. Four. Councillor Harkin. Four. Councillor Heaney. Against, John. Councillor Jackson. Against, John. Councillor Kelly. Against. Councillor Logue. Councillor McGinley. Against, John. Councillor McGowan. Against, John. Councillor Maguire. Against, John. Councillor McHugh. Against, John. Councillor McKeever. Four, John. Councillor McKinney. Four, John. Councillor Mooney. Four. Councillor O'Neill. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sinoy Barr. Four, John. Councillor Tierney. Four. Thank you. Mayor, I've recorded 22 for, 11 against, and 7 abstentions. So the motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you for that, John and Dre. Well done, Rachel. Um, members, I am going to take a break. So um, I will see you back here at uh, 10 past 6. We continue on to Councillor Money's motion. So members, I'll see you soon.
Hello? 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 Derek, your mic's on.
Okay, members, uh, welcome back. Okay, Councillor Mooney, motion please. Can we have it on the screen? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I see a second there would be Councillor Riley. So go ahead, Councillor Mooney. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, could uh, the motion be taken as read? Uh, members, I've been working with the residents of Dunfield Terrace and this issue for uh, some time and was asked to attend a meeting uh, at the end of last month with the residents. As members may have seen, a recent petition has been started by the association and they have already um, had a considerable amount of signatures. This relates uh, to a building development in the area that overlooks into the Jar Park and Spencer Road. If you're coming across the top, de top deck of the Craig Avon Bridge and look up from the city side going towards the water side, you'll see four or five blue homes that are uh, have been left in isolation. This is the development. Planning permission was granted prior to the incorporation of the new council. Building commenced on the site but came to a halt in May 2019. Development stopped suddenly and has not resumed, leaving half built homes unfinished and with residents still unaware as to why this has happened and more importantly, what is to become of it. Dunfield Terrace is one of the Waterside's oldest communities with a proud heritage stretching back to the turn of the last century. The area is generally a settled community with strong community bonds. Members, three years have elapsed since the building has stopped. The structures that remain have become increasingly dilapidated and continue to blight the area, which is one of the most iconic views of the city. They have become a vocal point for vandalism and antisocial behaviour involved in the abuse of drugs and alcohol. I have spoken to police about this and they confirm they are well aware of this site and are in full support of this motion and agree with its aim. Community safety wardens are also well aware of this site and the continuing problems it poses on their time as well. The wooden frames have now been exposed for three seasons. The structure acts as an alarmant for young teenagers, some of which it is understood come from local children's home. Residents have a catalogue of incidents already logged. In one recent week, the police were called at least five times to this particular site. During this time, there was an attempt to steal one, one of the residents' motorbikes. These gatherings continue well into the morning and the physical debris is left for residents in the morning after to look at on some occasions to clear up, but the emotional and human toll is becoming a large burden for some to bear, to bear. By way of update, I was contacted by residents to say the fire service were called to the site at 3 a.m. Uh, this morning to deal with a report of a fire. Police were in attendance and ambulance were in attendance. Again, young people were in the site uh, and it, it, it is clear or it seems to be clear that a fire uh, was started on the site. The residents are seeking our assistance. They fear it is only a matter of time before someone is critically hurt or even worse due to the vulnerability of the site. The motion asks for the owners council for, for, for council to lead the way and coordinate a meeting with the owners in conjunction with relevant stakeholders to meet with the residents to try and provide answers to perfectly reasonable questions as to who owns the property and also what are intentions of the owners and what can our officers and stakeholder partners do to assist residents in this situation. I should say, members, that residents have one overriding demand, and that is to see the demolition of these properties, thereby seeing the restoration of an important local immunity, which can be brought back for the use of all. There was change in the area, but it has clearly not worked out, and I would urge all members to support this motion. On, on passing, I should like to note with great thanks to Francis, Felicity, Malcolm, and others uh, for their hard work over the years. And you have brought this matter before you this evening. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Councillor Many OK members. Um, second by Councillor Reddy. I'm moving on to Councillor Jackson. Well, good Mayor. And uh, like Councillor Money, um, I was I've been working on the issue of antisocial behaviour um around this area and the greater vicinity for, for quite some time, and I've had regular meetings with the PSNA. The community wardens and and more recently the the health trust they try and address some of the problems, but in terms of the schedule for today's meeting, I was delighted to see this motion come before the council. Um, the long running saga of the development in Dun Dunfield has been, in my view, a shambles, and not only are these unfinished buildings an eyesore, they pose a very real public safety risk to the many young people that have been attracted to and are congregating in the big blue houses. Um, on behalf of Sinn Féin, I want to thank Councillor Mooney for bringing the motion to the Council and declare our full support for the for the motion and for the campaign for the residents. 
the residents of Dunfield and the surrounding areas have been campaigning for the protection of the green space in front of their homes for over 30 years. And as somebody who has grown up in this area and spent my childhood playing in the exact spot that these monstrosities stand, I think it's important to point out that this area is unrecognisable from the well-maintained green space with pathways and seating areas that was utilised by everybody from the local area when I was growing up. This motion calls for a greater understanding of the residents' concerns and their plans for the area, which we fully support. But in terms of clarity, I think it's important that we put on the record that it was in fact an SDLP environment minister who, in his own words, deliberated on this for personally for some time and said he was heartened by the maturity shown by residents in understanding the reasons for his decisions to approve the development on this site. From speaking to the residents on many occasions, um, there's a clear misunderstanding on why Mr. Durkin decided to approve the development of Dunfield. And I see this as a clear example of why oh, we sorry, need... Jackson, could you bring your remarks to a yeah, close, please? Just just finish the now, Mayor. I see this as a clear example of why we need local decision making. And I've ev I would have every confidence that if it was our council taking the decision, we would have placed greater weight on the character of the area, the valued amenity, the access and movement challenges and park and parking constraints. Um this this mayor just and in conclusion, this site should never have been earmarked for development for so many reasons, and council should explore all avenues to undo the damage that previous decisions has had. On Thank you, the Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Councillor Harrigan. Thanks, Mayor. First of all, we want to commend the uh, Dunfield residents who have uh, been very organised uh, on this issue. And as others have said, they have been campaigning on this issue for many, many years. And we want to express uh, our solidarity with them. But all, and, and also, uh, hopefully, this meeting tonight will give expression to their long-held frustration. And they should feel fully vindicated now in the concerns that they raised before um, these buildings were put up. And um, I think that the only they are owed an apology. Um, I think that there's a number of issues here that um, the, there's clearly something fundamentally wrong with planning that this could come to pass. Uh, there is a flawed, uh, serious flaws in planning when the needs of local residents can be uh, pushed aside um, and then they end up with this reckless development that is uh, you know, destroying the environment that they're living in that has ripped away uh, a, a green space that they loved, that they campaigned to protect, uh, and that should have been left for them to enjoy. And, and I and I think that they are, uh, you know, they, 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 I mean, they can't believe what's happened here in terms of the abandonment. They've been abandoned. These buildings have been abandoned. Um, and that they are clearly looking for answers. So what we'll need to see out of this uh, meeting tonight is uh, we agree with the proposals for action. Uh, this can't be allowed to kind of just continue. Those buildings can't be allowed to fall and the further um, uh, they can't be allowed to deteriorate even further and become uh, more of a risk for young people, for people in the area and for local residents. So we need action on it. I think there also needs to be lessons drawn from uh, what was a reckless planning decision uh, where profit, the drive for profit for some developers uh, was put ahead of the needs of local residents. Yes, sir, Hargan, can you bring your remarks there? I'll, I'll finish there. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Commissioner Hargan. Alderman McClendick. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. And there's probably little um, new that I can sort of say in this debate, except that I'm absolutely supportive of this notice of motion that's been brought before us. Um, Dunfield Terrace was one of our most iconic views from the waterside over to the city side. 
an area of character and an area that's difficult to negotiate with cars um, because, because of the very steep gradients of the streets behind it. I think it's absolutely disgraceful that people who campaigned for so many years to keep that open space in front of them have been left. And Christopher used the word monstrosity. I agree with him with these blue monstrosities in front of them. And they are absolutely a haven for antisocial behaviour, absolutely unsightly and a massive safety risk. I think it's it's good that this notice of motion has come before us. We need to try and do something about this. They should never, ever have been granted planning permission in the first place, but we need to do something now that they have been abandoned for, I think it's three years, that the residents of Dunfield deserve better. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McKenna. Uh, thank you, Mayor Flat me in, and I totally agree and thank Councillor Money for bringing this motion as well. I mean, only last week, uh, I was speaking to a police officer who had attended the site and they stated to me that it was totally unsafe to enter. So really, what risks are the people taking on entering the site to carry on their social behaviour? You know, and and what, what happens if some of them is seriously injured? I mean, do we start going down lines of liability and claims and stuff as well? Uh, something needs to be done. And everybody I spoke before us beforehand is... Uh, has fully backed this motion and we're fully backing it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Okay, members, I see no further speakers. So, uh, Councillor Mooney, do you want to sum up? Uh, Mayor, thank you. Uh, I do take on board um, all the support that, um, that, um, that the speakers have said, and I do note their comments. Um, clearly, when I was speaking to them, the uh, the Res Association and, um, and who urged me to take this motion it was clearly now that there's an issue that we are in the here and now, and uh, these dilapidated structures are sitting there for the last few years unfinished. And um, obviously, somebody owns these structures now. And the, the genesis of the motion and the, the value of the motion is to try and get some resolution now for, um, for the residents of Dunfield Terrace. and. That was why um, I brought the motion on behalf of the residents. I feel very much that it is their, their motion uh, because it is, uh, it is those residents who are living in that area, who are living with this situation, who have been living with the situation for the last number of years, and who continue to live with it, and who probably shouldn't have to live with it any, any longer. And uh, my sincere hope is that we find a way of helping our local residents to um, clearly find a way to uh, resolve their situation and through this motion i hope and sincerely hope that we find a way of being able to help them thank you chair and thank you to all our members who spoke greatly appreciate it thank you thank you thank you Commissioner Mooney. um members i'm not hearing any dissenting voices on this um is there anybody that could be abstaining or against this motion could you let me know now in the chat box okay the the motion by Councillor Mooney passes. Members moving on the Council Attorney. Council Attorney to move. Thank you, Mayor. Can I take that motion as read, please? You can. Can I have a seconder, please, members? I'll second it, uh, Chair. Councillor McKinley. Thank you, Councillor McKinley. Go ahead, Councillor Attorney. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to Councillor McKinley for, for seconding the motion. Mayor, I would just like to point out before I speak that this motion was obviously tabled. Uh, before the, the, the collapse of the executive at Stormont. But Mayor, from I joined this council in 2014, there's been lots of talk about the redevelopment of the Vanderbilt Stadium. And I have to point out that a huge investment by this council and that facility a number of years ago uh, was, was largely welcomed. It was always understood that the full redevelopment of the stadium would be done in a phase process. I hope that we can all recognise that the funding for phase two of the newly named Ryan McBride Brandywell Stadium was very much attached to the opening of the sub-regional stadium programme. In 2016, on a visit to Derry, the then DFC Minister, Paul Given, signalled his intention to open this scheme and allow applications to come forward. Shortly after that visit, the executive fell and we lay in limbo for three years. During that time, Mr Mayor, I proposed on several occasions the council write to the Department for Communities, to the Permanent Secretary and to anybody within the department who could provide us with an update on the scheme and every response was the same with no minister in place there was no change in directive by the department fast forward three years new executive new minister 
same scheme, same problems. This pr proposal for this scheme has lay on the desk of successive DFC, Sinn Féin and DUP ministers for the best part of six years and has not moved since. Mayor, I make no apology as a Derry City fan and someone who regularly attends the Brandywell on uh, bringing this proposal forward, but I want to make clear to the other members that this proposal, this motion, is not about the Brandywell Stadium. It's about Institute, it's about Derryview, it's about every club and every player who are currently expected to play football at facilities which are below standard. I have heard over recent days that there's been talk that the AFA will meet with clubs to find out their intentions if money becomes available, as if the AFA have been asked by the department to supply a shopping list for clubs. This council must resist this approach and insist that this money is made avail available to develop facilities in the north, not only for clubs that play under the AFA banner. Mayor, this scheme has been the victim of successive collapses of the executive by both Sinn Féin and the DUP. I think it's time that both of these parties got their act together, started putting people first, commit to deliver, to doing all in their power to get this scheme open, which I hope will allow clubs to develop their grounds, which in, view, in, in turn will help develop the players and indeed and help, help develop the game itself across the north of Ireland. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Turney. Uh, Councillor Haney. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, Minister Hargey has been on the record and very clear that moving this programme forward during this mandate as a priority and has been since he took up office. It was essential that any changes to the football landscape were identified to ensure that the programme will have the maximum impact on current and future plans for soccer. And in this council's uh, context, obviously, that means the completion of Brandywell, the Needs Institute uh, and their view. However, there are immediate challenges created by the actions of the DUP and the collapse of the executive. In terms of the sub-regional stadia programme, any new proposals cannot be presented to the executive for endorsement and agreement as required. It should be noted that these problems were not created by anyone in the football sector and the sector should not suffer because of the actions of the DUP. The Minister has been clear that she remains determined to find a way forward um, through these difficulties to deliver a sub-regional stadia programme uh, and the essential funding needed for football clubs. Uh, and it's, it was good to get confirmation at the committee this morning from officials uh, in response to a question uh, from Kira Ferguson that uh, the, the Brandywell and, and Institute and indeed Derryview all are eligible uh, for this fund when, when it opens. She's written to ministerial co colleagues highlighting the, the difficulties created by DUP's actions and asked for their support in overcoming the obstacles. I have no doubt that the minister remains committed to this program uh, and bringing it forward and clearly uh, and, and has clearly clarified where the blockages are and committed to try and resolve it and get around them. So, uh, Mayor, I have a small uh, couple of amendments that I had sent on to committee section earlier that they'll put on the screen. So, thank you. Thank you, Fab Councillor Haney. Uh, have you a seconder? I'll second. Who was that, sorry? Uh, Councillor McGinley. Thank you, Councillor McGinley. Um, okay, members, we have a amendment on the table here. Alderman McClanty, do you want to speak on the amendment? Yes, happy to speak to the two together, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I think this minister has been in office for two years, but she has failed to deliver on the new decade, new approach agreement to advance funding for the football stadiums across Northern Ireland. There is an executive commitment on sub-regional stadia funding. It could have been delivered any time during the last two years, and it still should be delivered today. Ms. Minister Harvey has dithered for two years, telling everybody that a result was just around this, the corner, but still today, nothing has been delivered. In August, she said progress, progress would be made in the coming weeks. In September, she said the programme would be rolled out in the short time ahead. What we have now seen is a minister playing politics with sports and with funding for our football clubs. Football is a sport which brings people together from all backgrounds, so it should not be used as a pawn to advance other issues. The decision by Sinn Féin ministers to link this to the development of Casement Park was telling. 
Sinn Féin's symbolic handling of the sub-regional stadium fund has once again exposed their sectarian politics. The minister was willing to progress in Casement Park and not in funding for football, which have both received executive approval. It is time for Minister Harkey to set aside her Sinn Féin political games to the side and get on with the job, deliver the funding before this mandate is over. It is disgraceful that she hasn't done so. And I'm glad to hear the proposer of the uh, notice saying that this isn't only for the Brandywell. Let's be very clear. This is for other um, clubs as well. And Institute is in there and other clubs as well. So I think we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't keep reference in the Brandywell unless we do keep reference in the other clubs as well. I think that saying that the executive is now the, the dup are now a cause for holding this up it's an absolute red herring and it's playing uh playing sectarian politics thank you mayor thank you uh Coster Doyle, do you want to speak on the amendment or is this speak on both mayor if that's okay fine thank you yeah go ahead yeah um i, I think this is a, a perfect um marker to show that we are now very firmly in election mode um, it's obvious that uh, Sinn Féin are very embarrassed about the lack of progress that they've made on this, despite uh, many years of promising football fans, particularly in Derry, um, that they would deliver um, a, a fully redeveloped Brandywell Stadium. Um, it's also very interesting to hear that the DUP um, want to bring uh, sectarianism into, into sport, uh, but we, could, um, we can wax lyrical about their previous decisions on their previous ministers. Um, it just shows that the current configuration in Stormont uh, doesn't work and that when it comes to being called to account, all of these parties uh, that sit around the executive table uh, think that they can be in it one day and out of it the next. One of the things that interested me about this um, primarily was that Deirdre Hargey stood up uh, in the Assembly uh, on the 14th, I believe it was, and said, you know, the agreement was always that I needed to take any proposals to the executive for approval. Um, and then a week later, after she had met AFA clubs, assured them that the programme was going to go ahead. Now, I think there's a question there as to whether she actually misled the Assembly or not on that, um, because she responded officially to an official oral question. Um, and then a week later, as I say, put out a press statement following um, what I was told was a very heated meeting with, I, with the AFA um, around her dithering as to whether she was going to actually release the money, um, which is within her department. She doesn't need uh, executive approval under the uh, budget rules, and she well knows that. This is something that has been around for so long that it's getting to the point now where, even as a, a very clearly stated previously, not a fan of football myself, um, I'm starting to get frustrated by the fact that this is being uh, kicked down the road, no pun intended. Because there are people yes, in the sir, oh, in you remarks, close, well, who are very, very uh, keen to see the Brandywell redeveloped as I am. Um, but I mean, to, uh, and, and that's why I brought the original motion forward to ensure that people from the department came down. But I certainly won't be uh, voting for the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, Councillor Hargan on the amendment. Speaking to the uh, original motion and the amendment. Thanks. Yeah, perfect. Thank yeah. you. Go ahead, Coach Argon. I, I think it's extremely frustrating that the uh, plans to upgrade and develop the Ryan McBride, McBride Brandywell Stadium, stadium haven't progressed. It's a disgrace. And I think we collectively should be all disgusted about this decision. And this stadium now is becoming a political football to the executive parties. Um, it's very clear that the Sinn Féin minister had an opp opportunity to move this forward, but sat on it. And I think what this reflects is the failure of Stormont to act for Derry, to act for our district, and to act for the North West. We can add now the Brandywell McBride, the, the Brandywell Stadium, to the, to, the, to the announcement by Ulster University that the ambition for McGee is 6,000 students instead of 10. And there wasn't a peep of protest by the executive parties when that decision was made. We can add this failure now to the failure to upgrade uh, the Derry to uh, Colerain rail line, which was supposed to have happened last year, and we get a feasibility study instead. We can add this failure to the treatment of our arts and culture sector, which we now, which they had to fight to, to show uh, structural inequalities 
and get the communities minister and the executive to acknowledge this. We can add this now to the failure of Invest NI. They actually took investment into our district in the Northwest seriously. And the list goes on and on and on. Um, so this is about the failure, not just of Sinn Féin. This is about the failure of all the executive parties to um, follow through on commitments that are made to Derry. Um, and I think that turning the trying to turn the, the Brandywell now and the unionist nationalist tit for tat uh, is about obscuring the failure uh, of the storm at the executive to actually uh, take seriously the commitments and the promises that, that have been made. And people across the city and across the district and everybody who uses the Brandywell Stadium, uh, the male and female teams have a right to be uh, uh, very frustrated and should be demanding action by our council. Uh, we should fight now to see this progressed. Um, there, there uh, is still time to move this forward, and I think as a council, Mr. Argan, could you bring your remarks to a close, please? Thank you, uh, Councillor Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and just on the amendment, um, and I will keep this brief because I appreciate that I'll have another opportunity to sum up on the on the wider uh, comments from people at, at the end of this motion. But the amendment, um, we won't be supporting. Um, the amendment points out that the council wants to call on Minister Hargey to explore options available. Minister Hargey has already said that she is exploring options available to open this fund. So why would this council call on a government minister to do something which she is already doing? That does not signal progress. Um, it's Sinn Féin in this chamber trying to cover the back of their own minister at the expense of football clubs across this district. And I will certainly not be playing second fiddle date. So we'll not be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finally, on the councillor McKinney on the amendment. Uh, on both, please. Uh, Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, we'll be fully supporting the original motion, and we'll not be supporting the amendment. Uh, it's it's all very well blaming other parties, but how long is this issue being kicked about? You know, but let's be honest. Explore options. We need to catch ourselves on here. You have it long enough. Let's sort it out and stop the excuses. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney, for that. Okay, members, I am going to bring in John now. The run is free on the amendment. Okay, thank you, Alderman Bresland. Just Alderman Bresland against. Alderman Devaney against. Alderman Guy. Alderman Guy? Against. Alderman Hussey? Against. Alderman Carrigan? Alderman Carrigan? Alderman McClintock? Against. Alderman McCready? Against. Alderman Ramsey? Against. Alderman Wark? Against. Answer Jason Barr? Against. Councillor Raymond Barr. Abstain. Councillor John Boyle. Against. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Or John. Councillor Carr. Councillor Carr. Councillor Cusick. Against. Against John. Thank you. Councillor Dobbins. Against John. Councillor Donnelly. Against. Councillor Doyle. Against. Councillor Duffy. Or. Councillor Edwards. Against. Councillor Farrell. Against. Councillor Ferguson. Against. Councillor Fleming. Or John. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Against. Councillor Heaney. Or John. Councillor Jackson. Or Councillor Kelly. Or Councillor Logue. Councillor Logue. Or John. Councillor McGinley. Or John. Councillor McGowan. Or John. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McHugh. Or John. 
Councillor McKeever. Against. Councillor McKinley. Against. Councillor Mooney. Against. Sorry, was that a four for Councillor McGuire there? Okay, numbers. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Against. Councillor Riley. Against. Councillor Sinai Barr. Against. And Councillor Tierney. Against. Thank you. It's Alderman Kerrigan against. Thank you. I have recorded 10 for the amendment, 28 against, and one abstention, so the amendment falls. Okay, thank you, John. The amendment falls. Um, members, moving back now to the substantial motion. Um, I see no further speakers on that, so I'm going to bring in Councillor Turney to sum up. Councillor Turney? Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I genuinely want to thank people um, for, for their comments. Um, but particularly I want to thank people who actually voted against the, the amendment because I genuinely believe um, that the amendment would not have um, progressed this scheme um, any further. Councillor Heaney and his remarks talked about the DUP blockages. I would point out that this has been lying uh, on, on the desk of the current DSC minister for two years, then lying um, in, a, in an empty office for three years prior to that and lying in, on the desk of the Paul Given when he was minister for communities as well. Uh, Councillor Doyle talked about being clearly in election mode. I would invite Councillor Doyle to check the minutes of this council from 2014, uh, the minutes of Health and Communities Committee meetings from 2013, and the minutes from Brandywell Working Groups. Uh, when it was in operation from 2014, I have been regularly um, and consistently calling for this scheme to open for the redevelopment of football stadiums across this district. Councillor McClintock um, spoke about uh, the importance of all our clubs. I am a Derry City fan, but first and foremost, I'm a football fan, and I want to see football grounds across this district develop, um, regardless of which club uh, plays on them, because all of the, the senior football grounds across this district also allow young people uh, to play football there as well, and I think that's really, really important. So while it, lobbying to see this scheme open, Councillor McClintock, I can assure you from my point of view, it will always be for all clubs across this district, not only um, at the Ryan McBride Brandywell Stadium. Councillor Harkin uh, spoke about uh, making this the Brandywell a political football um, and talked about a unionist and nationalist tit for tat. I would again point out that I'm a football fan. I want to see football grounds develop. This isn't a, a green or orange issue. Um, for me personally, um, I would like to see it a red and white issue, um, but it's not. It's about football and it's about making sure that people have the grounds um, and the facilities there. He also spoke about the failure um, of, of Stormont. Um, I'm not open to accepting failure. That's why I've consistently raised this issue from 2014, and I will not stop, and I make no apology for it. I will not stop until this scheme is open and clubs from across this district get an opportunity to apply for it. They um, better improve the facilities for everyone across this district. And he also talked about we need to fight now to see development on this scheme. I would point out to Councillor Harkin, some of us have been fighting for this since 2014, he wants to start now. I think that's shameful. But Mr. Mayor, thank you to everybody who has supported this motion. Uh, I genuinely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Attorney. Um, I'm going to pass now to John to take us through vote members. No substantial motion, Councillor Attorney. John. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Um, Alderman Breslin. For. Alderman Devaney. For. Alderman Guy. For. Alderman Hussey. For. Alderman Carrigan. Alderman Carrigan. Alderman McClintock. Alderman McCready. Ford. Alderman Ramsey. Ford. Alderman Walk. Sorry, members, before I vote. Can members, make sure the mics are off, please. Um, uh, Councillor Jason Barr. Orgel. Councillor Raymond Barr. 
Or. Councillor John Boyle. Or. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Or. Councillor Carr. Or. Councillor Cusick. Or. Councillor Dobbins. For John. Councillor Donnelly. For. Councillor Doyle. For. For. Councillor Edwards. For John. Councillor Farrell. For. Councillor Ferguson. For. Councillor Fleming. For John. Councillor Gallagher. For. Councillor Harkin. For. Councillor Heaney. For. Councillor Jackson. For John. Councillor Kelly. For. Councillor Logue. John. Councillor McGinley. For John. Councillor McGowan. For John. Councillor McGuire. For John. Councillor McHugh. For John. Councillor McKeever. For John. Councillor McKinney. For John. Councillor Mooney. For. Councillor O'Neill. For. Councillor Riley. For. Councillor Stenoy Barr. For John. And Councillor Tierney. For John. Mayor, that's um, all four unanimous passes. Yeah, yeah. Members. Members. Congratulations, Mr. Okay, members, moving on to the next motion of Councillor Gallagher. Councillor Gallagher. Thank you, Mayor. Um, could I have a seconder, please, members? I'll second that, Councillor McKinley. Thank you, Councillor McKinley. Go ahead there, Councillor Gallagher. Okay, I'll, I'll read it out, Mayor. Thank you. That this council supports the introduction of a fair, free public transport within Derry City and Strabane District Council that will greatly reduce the high cost of living immediately, benefit low income, low income families, mitigate against economic inactivity, reduces road congestion, and is good for the environment by reducing carbon emissions. In Derry City and Strabane Council area. Estimates from the 2018 Labour Force Survey indicates that there are 50,000 economically inactive people or unemployed from the ages of 16 and above across our district. Public transport free at the point of entry lifts the hard border that economic inactivity creates at these people's front door, allowing people to move freely around the district to work, seek health care, seek employment and to socialise. That we, this council, writes to Infrastructure Minister Nicola Mallon to introduce such a proposal. Mayor, this is very much, and we discussed this earlier on, on council, this is very, motion is very much about disparity in wages, about the working poor, it's about access to jobs and the low wage economy that we face in the Northwest. This is about access to health. We've seen very recently around PCR testing, that people in Strabane couldn't get access to them, had to travel, couldn't travel. This is about the low car ownership, poor infrastructure. And this is also good for the environment. And I call on members within this chamber to move this motion, to support this motion, and for this to become the corporate position of this council. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh... Councillor Gallagher, uh, Councillor Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Anything that's going to ease the financial burden on the residents of this council district is to be welcomed. This motion has multiple benefits economically, socially, and environmentally. And adopting this motion will show this council is proactive in its commitment to the district and its social and environmental needs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Councillor McKee. Well, I'm a good very thank you, Mayor, and I uh, wish to acknowledge Councillor Gallagher and uh, put this motion forward. Um, the own party, Sinn Féin, we actually passed uh, a recent motion at uh, an Ardesh recently um, supporting um, 
what essentially Councillor Gallagher is, uh, has put onto his motion here before us today. Um, and I have to say that in, in our motion, the focus of that was on the youth in terms of uh, advocating for free transport from for five to 18 year olds in order to uh, stimulate the economy and ease financial pressures on those uh, least well off in our society. So with that in mind, Chair, I had considered um, a slight amendment to, uh, I suppose, bring it in line um, with my own particular party. But Chairman, uh, in the line, or sorry, in the interest of unanimity, um, I decided against that. So uh, on behalf of my own party, Sam Fein, we're, we're prepared to, to support the motion as is, Chair. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Thank you, uh, Councillor Riley. Uh, thanks, Mayor, for bringing me in. And um, can I also point out that uh, a very similar motion to this one that we're debating here this evening uh, was presented uh, to Belfast City Council recently, uh, and our party and, and many parties supported it when it arrived there. So we're content uh, with supporting the motion that Councillor Gallagher has tabled here this evening. Um, I think that um, you know the, the point that the proposal makes in relation to tackling climate change about trying to encourage people onto public transport, trying to uh, reduce journeys to make sure that, uh, that, that our public infrastructure uh, is used in the best way possible. Uh, all revolves around making public transport accessible to as many people as possible. So obviously the fares that people have to pay uh, is a big part of that uh, question. Um, I know that the proposal is indicating that uh, it needs to be about uh, providing uh, fares uh, that are free. Uh, it's worth pointing out that the minister herself has already announced her intention to extend free travel across Northern Ireland for people with disabilities who currently pay half fare uh, and to widen the range of services facilitating concessory travel by extending that scheme to new operators uh, and indeed that is something that uh, obviously would require additional uh, financial responsibility from uh, the finance minister. Uh, I, I know that uh, in the answer that Minister Mallon has given to Belfast City Council when they wrote to her to her about this. Uh, the minister yeah. was was very uh, keen on this, uh, but needed the support from the executive, uh, specifically a multi-year budget uh, to allow uh, the, the Department of Finance and then in turn the Department for Infrastructure to budget for this. And we know obviously that there is no now uh, budget coming forward. Multi-year budget. So that makes it difficult, Mayor, uh, for the for the minister to 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 move positively on this. Uh, but certainly it's the SDLP's intention uh, to see progress on this and to make, as I said earlier, transport open to as many people as possible. So Mayor, we're happy with the uh, the proposal that's there. Uh, we, we do think that it is wider in relation to the Minister for Finance uh, and the wider executive. Uh, committing the money uh, to to this type of scheme. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Will you bring your remarks there, please? Uh, but yeah, Mayor, we're happy to support the motion from Councillor Gallagher. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Uh, Councillor Hargan. Thanks, Mayor. And yeah, I would like to commend Councillor Gallagher for bringing forward this proposal. Um, this is the kind of radical action that we need to take. Um, in order to address uh, inequality, the climate crisis, and the lack of access that so many people in our district suffer from. It's the kind of radical action that we don't see any of the executive parties willing to take. Um, so again, that's why uh, we're excited about this motion and we hope very much hope it passes. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we've, lived, we've been through a pandemic where we've seen elites, the politically connected, get handouts, get whatever they need. Uh, and we've seen a lot of people uh, despairing because they couldn't get any help from government. Um, and now we're in a situation where we have a cost of living crisis that is causing uh, misery and hardship for growing numbers of people. And we have so little action coming from the government to actually address it. And this is the kind of action that would make a real difference to people's lives, um, making uh, public transportation free for people right across the district. Uh, that would alleviate a lot of uh, financial burden on people. 
it will, as Paul says in his motion, uh, reduce road con uh, congestion. It'll help to address climate change. Um, these are the things that we need to be doing. And we're not going to make the changes that we need now by tinkering around the edges. Um, we're we're going to need to make radical changes to the way uh, our economy or is organised, the way travel is organised, uh, and that's what this motion would do. So we hope everybody backs this, uh, and we hope that when people back it, uh, that isn't about just passing it through the council as is often done. Uh, we want to see this sort of proposal acted upon uh, in Stormont. Thank you for that, Councillor Harrigan, Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Gallagher, for bringing the motion. We have no problem at all supporting the motion. I think it's a fantastic idea, and, and Councillor Gallagher highlighted very well the, the benefits were climate change and making sure that people with the, the lowest income are able to have access to things like healthcare. I, I think it's definitely doable whenever you talk to any of our um, our bus or translink um they a lot of the the money that they get is coming from the big journeys like the 212 to belfast they actually don't make a profit and it's, they make a loss on a lot of the journeys around in our city and district so i i think it's really achievable i think it's something that needs to be done and i, I commend councillor gallagher for bringing the motion forward so we'll be supporting it mayor thank you thank you for that councillor ferguson older month of any Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in, and the DUP has no problem uh, in supporting the notice of motion coming forward here. Um, I think everything has been well versed uh, by the previous speakers. Uh, and look, at the end of the day, we have, you know, uh, has been mentioned about the working poor. We have now people um, who are working, maybe two in a house of cars, two people working in a house, and they have cars, and the price of fuel going through the roof at the minute and only about to get higher. You know anything that will alleviate their transport even for those that, that get transport from home to work uh, you know cost a fortune now with their own transport and i think this may alleviate some of those problems but yeah i may just agree with all the rest of the comments here and support the, the notice of motion thank you other than uh country mckinney uh, thank you, Mayor, and I welcome the motion as well. And I, I, I'd just like to point out that there, there is many cities already in Europe which offer free transport. Luxembourg, with a population of 6,114, 6, offers free transport for all its population. Tallinn has done it in 2013, Tallinn being the capital of Estonia. They have uh, for all their residents as well, and they have not ruled out bringing it in for visitors as well. Dunkirk, with a rough population roughly the same as ours, uh, of 200,000, they have done it as well in 2018, and it seems to be working there. So it is doable, and it is workable. So uh, we fully support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McKinney. Uh, Councillor Donnelly, final speaker, members. Donnelly, I'll get chair. I'll keep it short and straight to the point. Uh, very happy to, to second this motion. Uh, it's a top-class motion. Uh, it's, you know, it it's, it's does what it says on the tin, uh, and as as explained by all the previous speakers, uh, the parts that I like about it is that you know, it 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 takes all the right boxes, you know, regarding climate change and the damage that's being done to the environment, and the the economic discrimination uh, that's being foisted upon a, a lot of members of of our district. So uh, very happy to second and support the motion. Come out of it. Okay, thank you, members. Um, I'm going to pass now back to Councillor Gallagher to sum up. I'll not hold the meeting back too long, just to thank all the members who, who spoke and, and members who are giving us the support. Thank you. Thank you, for that, Councillor Gallagher. Okay, members, I'm not hearing, hearing any dissenting voices in this. Um, any member looking to abstain or go against this motion, could you let me know now on the screen or chat box? Okay, members, the motion for Councillor Gallagher passes unanimous. Well done, Councillor Gallagher. Members, moving on to Councillor McGowan. Let's just get on the screen here. Councillor McGowan. Thank you, Mayor. I'll take it as read. Uh, by yeah, have, we, have, we a, have we a seconder, members? Um, one second, Councillor Duffy. 
Commissioner Duffy. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner McGowan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, listen, I think everyone watched on uh, on that Sunday the stream of, of Brian Oaks winning the uh, All Ireland Intermediate Football uh, Tournament, and I think uh, you've already, uh, Mayor, uh, provided them with a, a civic reception. But it's really devolved on that. Um, I believe that uh, this is an historic one for the city and this region and this district. And the motion I have put down is, is to commit council to try to build on that. Uh, anyone will tell you in sport, one trophy doesn't uh, fill a trophy cabinet. So it's important that, that, that this one isn't just a one-off. Uh, we all seen the banners uh, at the match saying there is a no GAA in the city. And uh, I do think, uh, I think it's captured the imagination of many people and even non-GAA people on what they've achieved. So it's with that in mind that uh, I put this motion and I, I believe that very few sports offer young people that, that, that channel that they get. I believe the, the structure of the GAA and the amateur nature of it and the fact that it, it includes all the parishes across this district is one of the things which 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 bonds it to the community. Uh, with that in mind, uh, I, I hope we can agree they pass this motion. Uh, many of the, the clubs throughout this uh, city and district lack the facilities, and and it's important that we build not only on the success in the city but throughout this district, so that uh, we get many more All Ireland under media champions. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner McGowan. Uh, Commissioner Turney. Thank you, uh, Mayor, for allowing me in, and thanks to Councillor McGowan um, for, for bringing uh, this motion. I suppose, as a councillor in, in Ballyarnett, Mayor, thanks to you as well for recognising the achievements of, of Brian Oaks uh, with the civic reception, which was already mentioned by uh, Councillor McGowan. Um, I have already stated that, I, that I'm a football fan, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a sports fan, Mayor, um, and I think that we as a council should be doing anything that we can to encourage young people um, and all, people of all ages really to get involved in sport in whatever level or capacity that they can. Um, the SDLP are happy um, they, they support this notice of motion because it does um, give people um, and, and tie council and they help them to give people the opportunity um, to, to meet new friends, to, to learn a, a new skill um, and, and to progress at something uh, that they're actually uh, very, very good at and something that they're talented at. So we have no issue um, in supporting it, um, particularly um, around the, the congratulations to, to Brian Oaks. Um, obviously, that was a huge achievement. Um, John has already mentioned the fact that you know people um, would lead you to believe that GAA doesn't exist in Derry City. Um, I think Brian Oaks and all of the clubs um, that are making progress, particularly uh, in the GAA um, and the city, um, are, are, are proving that uh, to be nonsense. Um, and, and hopefully we'll see more clubs um, in the city following in the, in, in the footsteps of Brian Oaks. But this motion, I think, is really about um, trying to make sure that we are encouraging young people under the sport and encouraging people to get involved um, and get out and, and, and help out their local GEA club. We're only too happy to support that um, in whatever way we can. So once again, thanks to Councillor McGowan for, for bringing the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, Rich, uh, look, uh, just to echo some of the sentiments, uh, massive achievement. Uh, I, I was there for the team's home, homecoming, as I said previously. Uh, the, the sense of, of achievement was, was palpable. Uh, what struck me was the amount of young people who turned out. Uh, great to see. You know, uh, I think it's very important that young people are do become active and get involved in, in, in sports and and. The, the numbers that had showed up that night was just unbelievable. Uh, you know, uh, Shandon's local club here too, going from strength to strength, great. Uh, and I hope that, that Brian Oak's achievement and, and, and the success of other uh, clubs, you know, will break down some barriers for, for young footballers and hurlers to, to, you know, break them barriers that there seems to be to get on the, 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 the county team. So uh, very, very happy to uh, support the, the motion and thanks to Councillor uh, McGowan for bringing it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor O'Neill and Councillor McKinney. Uh, 
Uh, Chair, I think Maeve O'Neill was in front of me. Apologies, you are correct. Sorry, Councillor O'Neill, go ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Um, yeah, I just want to um, echo what's already been said. I think it was an unbelievable achievement from uh, Steve Fowl, Brian Oaks. Um, I think uh, there was a real sense of, of pride in the city and, and they, they played a brilliant game, but they, they have uh, the players have worked so hard um, this season and over previous seasons, uh, you know, to make this, this possible. And it's brilliant to see a team from the city where, uh, you know, uh, we're not known for um, our, our Gaelic football. And I think it really put, uh, uh, put us on the map um, when it comes to Gaelic football. And um, the, the women's team in Steelstown as well have, uh, have been incredible over the years, one of many uh, Derry County champions, uh, Championships. And uh, I think what they're doing down in Steelstown, uh, but across the GA and uh, across in the GA across the city is really really great in, in terms of supporting uh, young people, children um, of all genders uh, to play Gaelic. Um, and and the, the the infrastructure of the GA is excellent um, in terms of bringing the whole community on board and along, and everybody has a role and. For anybody who has a, a a child or a nephew or a niece who who plays uh, GEA, you're often uh, brought in to to help in the in the structure. And I think that's that is the wonderful thing about the GEA is the community that goes along with it. So um, I want to say well done to the team and well done to the whole community around them who who I'm sure fed them, who you know gave them lifts, who who supported them along the way because a team can't do, can't get that far without a group of committed supporters around them as well. So um, thank you, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you for that, Councillor O'Neill. Uh, Councillor McKinney? Uh, thank you for letting me in, Mayor. Uh, just, uh, I, I, I support all sport from Tilly Winks right through to the darts. And to be quite honest, I have never been to a Gaelic match in my life. But what I will say, it's a big, big achievement for any team to win an all and congratulations to Brian Oaks and we feel support this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McKinney. Uh, Older Man McCready. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, firstly, the hearty congratulations. Um, outstanding achievement. Um, when I look at the motion, the first part, 100%. The second part, I just want to discuss with members two aspects. Firstly, sport is sport and it should be precisely that you know for the good and the benefit of young people and experience challenging each other challenging themselves and you know to compete to win and to learn how to lose uh, so my, my observation is not necessarily a concern yet um, but certainly an observation is we, we must treat all sports equally and i say that because when i go to new buildings the cricket team is growing but their football team needs council support. You know, so there's all aspects of sport which need council support. I don't understand what aspect um, that the GAA is not getting from council that they can't avail of already. And the same way I would say that with the football club in new buildings. Um, so I'm not to compare sport for sport, but in general, you know, it should apply equally to all. Um, and if that's not the case, then I would ask officers to, to let me know if that is not the case, if the GA are somehow um, omitted or, or not getting access the same way football, tiddlywinks or, or anything else is getting, then please highlight it and let me know and I'll do something about it uh, as a member. Uh, the other aspect is, a, is something that makes me uncomfortable, but I must say it because that's what people say to me on the ground when I'm out and about. So re recently in the press, there was a club which had marked and commemorated uh, some sort of a memorial for uh, members who lost their lives. Uh, they were from a prescribed terrorist organization. If a football club, a hockey club, or a tiddlywink club did that, I would condemn that equally, irrespective of who that prescribed organization was fighting for or who died for. I care not. So my concern is just make sure if we're doing this in council, that we can actually uh, corporately stand behind all our clubs, irrespective of they've kicked the ball over the bar or onto the bar and into the nets. 
but I can't be having or supporting things which are linked directly, indirectly with a terrorist campaign and somehow he says it's okay. Now, I'm saying that, Mr. Mayor, but I'm not going to deny all those young children from across the city and district access to GAA because more power to them, get out there and give it a go. But with a negative connotation, which is linked with our troubles, should not be featuring in our sport uh, in 2022 or the years ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Alderman Jose, uh, you've put up a amendment proposal here. Uh, I'm proposing an amendment to the second paragraph, uh, Mayor. The second paragraph? I don't know if I have a seconder for that. I'll okay. second that, Alderman Devaney. Alderman Devaney. Okay. Okay, happy enough for that, Alderman Hussey, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Mayor, I'm, I'm trying to get myself sorted here. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And uh, firstly, can I, like others, congratulate Steelstown by an Oaks on their tremendous achievement. Um, and I understand that Brian Oak uh, actually passed away because of leukemia. And uh, as some members will know, I myself uh, have leukemia and appreciate uh, the effort made by Steelstown and their recognition of Brian uh, Oag's contribution to their club. Um, as some others have said, this is an achievement which needs to be built on, but not just for Gaelic football. It needs to be built on for all sport across our district. Uh, we've already heard the concerns with regard to the uh, Stadia program. Uh, and, you know, this isn't a similar vein. We have clubs in our area achieving marvellous uh, results with limited resources. So uh, I would like to think that, that the achievement from Steel Sound by Oaks is something that cannot just activate and encourage uh, GAA but all sport across the city and district. And in light, that light, I propose the amendment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Fred. Alderman Hussey, uh, Councillor Duffy. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And I'm just coming in to briefly state that um, we won't be supporting the amendment. We feel, while I understand um, where Derek's coming from, the motion is about Gaelic Games. Um, it's about the GA. It's about the progression of GA within the city and district. And to amend it to all sport takes completely away from the spirit and content of the motion so we can't support it and if derek wants to bring a motion about all sport he's more than welcome and we will support it thank you thank you Councillor Duffy, alderman Devaney. thank you mayor for allowing me in uh, and chair the amendment and uh, the dup has no problem in supporting and uh, as previously stated um this uh, the amendment is about supporting all sport and not making the ga a hierarchy of the sport um, as previously said, we have all local football clubs, we have cricket clubs uh, and other clubs who are, are struggling out there uh, and need support. But look, uh, and I do understand the, the story in around um, the young guy, Brian Oak, who passed away at a very, very young age. But uh, I believe th this amendment here uh, has sent out a message that the council support all sports, um, no matter what their background is, as I said, whether it's hockey, football or cricket or GA. But Chair, we will be supporting the amendment. Thanks. Thank you, Slat. Uh Alderman McCready. Thanks, Mayor, for your indulgence, which I welcome the amendments. And when you consider 
Oh, every child across the city and district right now, they're in different schools or uh, different youth clubs, different sports clubs. And when they listen or hear or, or, or read about it on Facebook that somehow we, we select, single out, uh, treat differently one particular game than another, I think it's a very poor reflection on us. Whilst I fully understand the intent and indeed the content of this motion, so I'm not calling anybody out to say you're doing this to be divisive for that, but I'm asking uh, members, uh, Mr. Mayor, is to be considerate. And we talk about equality, which gets talked about more often than other um, than other words within this chamber, than this amendment, which says all sports, includes the GAA. So by those people who will vote in favor of this amendment, by default, will support the GAA and their aspirations and everything else. So I think it's more inclusive and it's more equal to include all sport as opposed to single them out and treat them differently. If now's the time for anybody's slogans out there for this election saying equality and inclusivity, now's your chance to actually put it on record and be inclusive and be equal with regards to sports. Thanks, Mayor. Mr. McKinney. Thank you again, Mayor Flatman. Look, um, you know, I, I can see where Alderman Hussey's come is coming from, but you know, when I when I first arrived in this town city or district, whichever you wish to call it, uh, some fifteen years ago, I was told that this was a soccer town, and that's what it was, mainly soccer town. So, uh, what I'm saying is, I, I think the original motion is really trying to make a point and say, look, you know. GA needs to be recognised just a, a, a bit more in the town as much as soccer is, you know. So on that basis, we will be abstaining from the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Dwight. Thanks, Chair. Uh, keep it short and sweet. I really do think that talking down uh, to people um, about what's clearly going on here um, is is what's wrong with uh, the sentiment of this motion? If and I see Sandra has has put on the the chat there. If it was about boxing, would you be accused of being divisive? I think she's entirely right. Um, if this was about uh, cricket and someone tried to amend it to be um, about soccer, I doubt that that would be the same sentiment coming from uh, from Alderman. Pardon me, from uh, Alderman McCready. So I mean, try trying to dress this up as being anything other than anti-GAA um, is insulting to the rest of us. Um, just come out and say it, and uh, I certainly will be supporting the amendment. Councillor Hargan. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, we won't be supporting the amendment, and of course we support all sports. Um, I myself, uh, love soccer, I play soccer, but I also love Gaelic games. I love basketball, baseball, uh, watch rugby as often as I can. Uh, I enjoy watching the Irish cricket team. Uh, I'm sure people watch the Winter Olympics. Um, and I think we should encourage people to, uh, you know, try out as many sports as they can and be involved uh, in, in the sports that they, that they, they like the most. I think that this amendment uh, kind of cuts against the spirit of what it's trying to do, which is that the Steelstown team had such a, an amazing victory, and there's great momentum right now in uh, in the city and in the district for Gaelic games. Um, I think what Steelstown did is that they put uh, Gaelic games on the map in the city, especially that's not necessarily as known for its, the passion that exists here for Gaelic games. And I think we want to build on that now and really encourage people um, and encourage people who, uh, you know, we, we all heard the speech by the Steelstown captain at the end, after the match um, and the long fight that they've had. Um, and I think this is about encouraging that. It's not about saying another sport isn't as important. We've had other brilliant motions recently. Mabel Neal's motion about the Derry City uh, women's football team um, and about uh, increasing the visibility uh, there. So I think that uh, you know we're, we're uh, we we support all sports, but we think that it's important right now that we um, highlight the contribution of our our, our Gaelic uh, games teams and 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 hope that this stimulates uh, you know more uh, support and funding and and um, 
for it in the, in the city and district. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hargan, Councillor Attorney. Thank you, uh, Mayor, for allowing me on to speak on the amendment. Um, we'll not be supporting uh, the amendment. This motion, as we understood it, um, was specifically about Gaelic Games um, and about trying to promote Gaelic Games within this council district. And I think that's really, really important. We can see that historically um, there has been a lack of funding and a lack of support for Gaelic Games within this council district. Um, and that's not the fault of this council. There's there's many organisations that, that, that shoulder some of the blame for that. The Derry County Board, the Ulster Council and Croke Park itself. But I think what Brian Oaks have done um, for, for this city and district, at the moment, they have provided a hook um, for, for Gaelic Games to capture young people and to get them involved in the sport. And I think we, as a council, uh, in supporting the GEA, need to do all we can to capitalise on that. Um, I'm not against any other sport or, or any other sport trying to, to push themselves up and attract people to them. But... If that's the case, and if that's what people want to do, then they should bring a motion in relation to that. I think there is an appetite, particularly in my own community at the minute, where young people want to aspire to play for Brian Oak's senior team. And I'm sure that that's the same in Craigan for Shan Dolans and in other parts of this council district um, for people looking to play for their local club. I think that's something that we um, can support. I think it's something that we should be feeding and doing all we can to get young people to play on it. And also recognizing um, the historical lack of investment in GAA and this city and district um, and trying to do all we can to promote that and to support that. So for those reasons, not for any um, divisive reasons or any sectarian reasons or any other reasons, for those reasons and those reasons alone, we will not be supporting the amendment. We will be supporting the original motion. Thank you. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you, Chair. Chair, look, unfortunately, uh, there's a perception here, there's a hidden undertones uh, regarding this. Uh, you know, and to be honest and to be frank, unionism needs to wise up here. You know, this isn't the first time in this meeting tonight we've seen it, you know, earlier with the Irish language signs and 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 and, and the Derek. Uh Chair, look, it's a single issue. You know, we, we've had another single issue earlier regarding the, the Brandywell Ryan McBride Stadium. Nobody tried to dilute it. The point has been made by numerous uh, people here tonight, particularly by Councillor uh, Duffy, you know, bring a motion. I, you know, cricket has been mentioned. I've been at meetings with New Buildings Cricket uh, Club. If they bring a motion here, I would be happy to support it. I won't try and dilute it. Uh, you know, we've had Institute, the success story of Institute and the brandy. Well, you know, I, I've made a number of proposals regarding Institute. I've been on the ground, as have all our councillors. All parties have been involved in that and, this, and have become a success. Unionism needs to wise up here and not be supporting this because all it's doing is deliberately diluting it and taking away. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, Councillor McGowan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just on the amendment, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed uh, on that on those comments from Councillor McGinney. The, the main motivation for me bringing this forward is exactly what Emma Doyle and everyone else has said. Uh, what Brian Oaks has done has caught the imagination of thousands of young people in this district. Uh, I'm, I'm a lover of all sports. I, I played cricket until 16. I boxed until my early 40s. Uh, I've never brought politics on this board and there was no attempt to do it in this motion. It was keeping politics out of this. And I think when we bring politics on there, that's a shame. Uh, I sat in Brady and watching Zimbabwe beat Ireland in the cricket. I I'm a proud cricket fan. And like, like Councillor Donnelly and others have said, it's a shame because this is about young people, their love of GAA, their love of sport. And uh, there's no politics in this. This is simply about recognising something which no one would have dreamed of. The story of Brian Oaks, it's, it's movie material. Uh, Andy McGurk, or the ex-chief executive of the council, was one of the founding members. They bring GA back into the city and district. 
Uh, there's some Tyrone people listening to this, but but Derry never was known to have a good Gaelic history, and now we do, and we need to build on that. And that's all that was meant by this motion. And like others have said, I will support cricket, I'll support Tiddlywink, somebody said, and I'll support hockey, anything which gets young people active. But this is only about sport and about catching that wave, which doesn't come often, and building that success. That's all I wanted to say. So I won't be supporting the amendment. Councillor Jackson. Thank, thanks, Mayor. And uh, I know Councillor Duffy and McGowan um, outlined our party's position on the amendment, but I just wanted to come out and provide a wee bit of context. As somebody who grew up in the watershed um, playing Gaelic games, quite often, Whenever we have, we, when we showed up the council facility to play a match on a Saturday, we found broken glass or dog excrement um, spread across the pitch. Um, there was very clear messages. Um, there was messages from elected members of the old Derry City Council to say that Gaelic games would never be welcome in the watershed. Um, we've seen, despite. The obstacles that's put, that's been put in play in front of Gaelic games. We've seen Gaelic games growing, um, and continuing to grow, and that's manifested itself in the the achievements of Brian Oaks, and it'll continue to grow. Um, but but the, the reality is is that the uh, even now, whenever since the inception of this new council, um, we've seen a lot more support for Gaelic games. But even now, there's there's a real deficit in terms of facilities. There's a there's an automatic priority given to soccer when booking pitches, and Gaelic clubs need to wait until the 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 soccer um, clubs decide not to use a pitch before they can book. So there's real there there's still there's still barriers there's barriers in terms of pitch provision and facilities, and they need to be addressed. And I know the 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 politicising of sport needs to be needs to be condemned it needs to be called out and i'm delighted to see that um that a lot of all our members have recognized that as part of this motion so no i just wanted to provide that we bit a context mayor thank you okay councillor jackson um uh, before i bring um before i bring john i just want to say members um as mayor I've had the great honour of meeting many of the sports club throughout the district from the GAA, the football, the cricket, the all of them. And I totally agree that we should be behind all sports. I had the total honour of having Steelstown here last week. I had the the young girls up in Sturban there from Holy Cross GAA and a number of them played football for the the Northern Ireland international team. And uh, it's it's it doesn't matter what sport it is we should be getting behind them all here so we should as councillors so um i'll be supporting both uh Mehmet and the, the motion on this one as as mayor of the city so i'm going to pass to john now to take us through a vote thank you mayor alderman breslin four alderman devaney four alderman guy or alderman hussey on the amendment four. Correct on the amendment, yes. Four, Alderman Hussey. Four, yes. Alderman Carrigan. Four, John. Alderman McClintock. Four. Alderman McCready. Four. Alderman Ramsey. Four. Alderman Wark. Four. Four. Councillor Jason Barr. Against. Councillor Raymond Barr? Against. Councillor John Boyle? Against. Councillor Michaela Boyle? Against. Councillor Carr? Councillor Carr? Councillor Cusick? Against John. Against John. Councillor Dobbins? Against John. Councillor Donnelly? Against. Councillor Doyle? Against. Councillor Duffy. Against. Councillor Edwards. Against John. Councillor Farrell. Against. 
Councillor Ferguson. Abstain. Councillor Fleming. Against John. Councillor Gallagher. Against. Councillor Harkin. Against. Councillor Heaney. <clears throat> Against. Councillor Jackson. Against John. Councillor Kelly. Against. Councillor Logue. Against. Councillor McGinley. Against. Councillor McGowan. Against. Councillor McGuire. Against. Councillor McHugh. Against John. Councillor McKeever. Councillor McKeever. Four John. Four. Councillor McKinney. Abstain, John. Abstain. Councillor Mooney. Against. Councillor O'Neill. Against. Councillor Riley. Against. Councillor Sina Barr. Against, John. And Councillor Tierney. Against. Thank you. Mayor, I've recorded uh, 10, 4, 28 against and two abstentions, so the amendment falls. Okay, thank you, John. Um, members, I see no further speakers on this substantial motion, so I'm going to pass on to Councillor McGowan. Now, do you sum up? Well, I suppose uh, there's not really much more I can say. I'm just delighted that uh, members have have taken what I what, what I've tried to say here. That is just to recognise uh, a once you could say it's a once in a lifetime achievement for some some of those young lads. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, the the, the Gerd teams as well come through. So this is a it's a subject I I think that we're all it's dear to many of our hearts. It's about getting young people active and getting them at sport. And there's definitely no hint of politics at all on this motion that I put forward. So um, I, I just want to thank members for, for, for listening and being very respectful, um, but disappointed in some people trying to make politics out of it. But uh, I think uh, the majority of us see what this is about. Yes. And we, we, we see that GA for a long time has been the fur cousin of other sports. And this is just trying to get about equality into that. And I also take council, uh, Councillor Tierney's uh, uh, comments regarding it hasn't always been council. But uh, I just think we can build a better future and support for our young people. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you for that. Um, members, if there's any descendant voices, or will they go against the substantial motion here? Could you let me know? Or I'm, a, yeah. I'm older man, I'll say, okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take it to you again, Chaw, for a vote. Alderman Bresland. Abstaining. Alderman Devaney. Abstain. Alderman Guy. Four. Alderman Hussey. Abstain. Alderman Carrigan. Abstain, John. Alderman McClintock. Abstain. Alderman McCready. Four. Four. Alderman Ramsey. Abstain. Alderman Wark. Four. Councillor Jason Barr. Four, John. Councillor Raymond Barr. Four. Councillor John Boyle. Councillor John Boyle. Right, stuck there, John and Port. Thank you, Councillor Michaela Boyle. Four, John. Councillor Carr. John. Councillor Cusick. Four. Councillor Dobbins. Four, John. Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Doyle. Four. Councillor Duffy. Four. Councillor Edwards. Edwards. 
Councillor Farrell. Four, Air John. Councillor Edwards. Thank uh, you. Four for Farrell as well. Councillor Ferguson. Four, John. Councillor Fleming. Four, John. Councillor Gallagher. Four. Councillor Harkin. Four. Councillor Heaney. Four. Councillor Jackson. Four. Councillor Kelly. Four. Councillor Logue. Four. Councillor McGinley. Four, John. Councillor McGowan. Four, John. Councillor McGuire. Four, John. Councillor McKee. Four. Councillor McKeever. Four, John. Councillor McKinney. Four, John. Councillor Mooney. Uh, four. Councillor O'Neill. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Stephen Barr. Four, John. Councillor Tierney. Four, John. Thank you, members. I have recorded 34 for no one against and six abstentions. Thank you. The abstention motion passes in. Okay, members, moving on the culture domain. Thank you. Uh, Just two seconds here, Councillor Donnelly, if we get that up on the screen. Okay. There we go. Have we a seconder? Yeah, Councillor Gallagher has indicated. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead there, Councillor Gallagher. Chair, look, basically, this is a, a, a rehash of uh, Councillor Gallagher's motion that happened uh, a number of uh, months ago. But I think it's that important that, that and there has been, that things have got worse. It is beyond any doubt that there exists an increasingly significant problem of people being able to gain access to their GP. Attempts to get an appointment often means dozens of phone calls, in some instances over a hundred times, before they hear a human voice. In a lot of instances, voice will inform them that they will have to phone again tomorrow, as there are no longer any appointments available for that particular day. The situation, this situation can continue for weeks and months. In a lot of cases, the potential patient has often given up trying and suffers the complaints. The dangerous, this dangerous state of affairs means that not only is the pain and discomfort being endured, but it also could be delaying treatment or an early diagnosis of a problem which is more serious in nature. In other instances, people have become so desperate that they have begun self-medicating, borrowing medication from others and ordering remedies online, which is guesswork. This is the last resort which people are turning to. Although risky and highly dangerous, the medical condition or pain are forcing them to take a chance as often they feel they have no option. This inevitably will lead to further pressure on an already run down health service as it misdiagnosis and potentially adverse reactions to taking the wrong medication will certainly lead to worsening and more acute health problems. I am aware of one nurse who has been trying for months, in fact, seven months to get access to GP services so she can get clearance to get back to work following long COVID. Emergency departments are increasingly becoming the first port of call for those exasperated with a GP crisis and see trying to get an appointment with a GP as a futile, futile exercise. The result is that the waiting room at Alton Galvin Emergency Department will have cancer sufferers and trauma victims sitting in line with people who have ailments such as minor lacerations, ingrown toenails and people requiring tetanus injections. Local news reports over the last few days have been highlighting the crisis at emergency departments. Many are operating over capacity for a majority of time. People are suffering on waiting, waiting on operations, sometimes for years, as we have the highest waiting list. There will be those who will attempt to score cheap critical points and blame this situation in Stormont. The reality is the situation has been deteriorating for a number of years and wasn't a great, great deal better before the pandemic struck. So it would be disingenuous to heap all the blame on the COVID situation or a lack of a functioning executive. There is no doubt that there exists a serious crisis in the health service and that the deterioration of GP services is adding to this. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor, and thanks to Gary for bringing this motion forward. Um, I, I had a, a difficulty with the original motion. Uh, to be perfectly honest, because I thought that it it maybe put a bit of blame for um, you know the restrictions of uh, that had led to difficulties for people getting to see their GPs on the GPs themselves. Um, but I have to say that 
given things have moved on so swiftly in the last number of weeks, particularly around uh, restrictions. I was quite surprised to see that um, the uh, a former colleague of mine in the, in the BMA, uh, the chair of the GP committee, had now said that the phone call triage system is going to be around for a long time. Um, that isn't acceptable for, for so many of our constituents. It is time that people get back into doctor surgeries and people get back to a bit of normality around uh, around this uh, vital public service because there is no doubt that there's a buildup, not just of physical, but of mental health issues that have arisen the last two years and been exacerbated by the last two years. So it is very important um, that those services do return to normality. Um, so I do support the motion um, and I'd be, be uh, very keen to to see what plans are in place to, to return people to the accessibility to their local GP. Thank you. Thank you for Councillor Doyle, uh, Councillor Attorney. Mayor, thank you um, for, for bringing me in. Um, listening to the conversation so far, um, I have to say I fully agree with, with, with a lot of what Councillor Donnelly has said um, in his opening remarks. And I do think that this is a, a problem in, in some GP surgeries that pre exist, pre dictates the, the pandemic. Um, I know of people who have had the queue up um, outside their doctor's surgeries from 8 o'clock in the morning until it opens at 9, they try and get an emergency appointment, they see the doctor that day, and that was before the pandemic. Um, so yes, I do think that this is a problem, and I do think it's something um, that this council should be um, taking an interest in and doing all we can um, to support people um, getting back and to see their GP. But I think when we're also discussing this motion, I think we also have to point out um, that GPs and some of the GPs that I know um, are working around the clock and have been working around the clock throughout the, the, the course of this pandemic. Um, if they're not in their surgeries, um, they were either at the foil arena or at the complex giving out um, the vaccine. If they weren't there, they were at the, the COVID um, center, which was set up by GPs um, at, out of, at the outer hours, or to try the outpatients, building it out like Elvin, trying to do all that they can um, to, to lead and to get us through uh, the pandemic. But I think now it's time uh, that we put our support to the GPs because I don't think that any GP wants to be not to see their patients. Yes, yes. Please, thank you very much. And I don't think GPs want their patients to be self-medicating or anything like that. I think the GPs want to see their patients. I think they want our support and they need our support. So for that reason, the SDLP are happy to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ferguson. Mayor, thank you and thank you for Councillor Donnelly for bringing the motion and thank you for, for his very balanced remarks. Um, can I start by declaring that I'm a member of Dr Black's practice, but GPs were struggling in our city and district pre-COVID because of the lack of GPs here. You know, during the, pra the the pandemic, some of the practices had found that the telephone tri triage was a vital tool and, and need to use it going forward, and it does need to be balanced. I'd like to see the health minister come to show what plans he has to alleviate that critical situation and for Dr Tom Black to come and explain the pressures that the GPs are currently under um, due to the backlog in our healthcare system. A lot of the GPs are dealing with people on waiting lists and that's just exasperated by the fact that they're in pain and then that's leading to more ailments and that's why we have such a big backlog of people trying to get access to the GPs. The GPs have nowhere to to send them, they can't send them direct to wards. They have to send them to A and E, which then we're having a backlog in our A and E. Um, I want to thank all our GPs, all our healthcare services, all the NHS. They have worked immensely over the last two years and pre-COVID. Um, I think it is uh, more to do with our healthcare service and how uh, GPs can't have access to referring our patients onwards so we don't have access to consultants. Um, I, I, I know myself, my own GP rang me at eight o'clock late one night to give me results for bloods for my daughter. And, you know, I know she has two, two small children at home. She's working as much as she can to try and get this backlog um, sorted. So I, I, I completely agree with the motion. I, th I think there, there's no blame here on the GPs at all. I think that some practices are able to deal with it better and some are struggling and that's why they need support from 
the, the health minister, they need support and we need to reform the, the health service. So we are happy to support the, this motion and, and happy to thank all our GPs and healthcare staff in the NHS for all their, their work and res all, all, all the time. Thank you for that, Councillor Ferguson. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mayor, and just a declaration of interest as an employee of the Western Health and Care Trust. Um, yeah, I um, we're supportive of this motion. I think um, you know the health and social care service is on its knees. We've seen uh, through the media reports uh, just yesterday um, about the crisis that exists um, in our EDs, and I think like that whenever there is a crisis of this. Uh, magnitude in our health and social care service. It's at the, the, the services at the front door, which is the emergency departments, it's the GP practices, which are really, um, you know, showing uh, the magnitude of that, of, of the crisis that exists. And and this is uh, through years of, of poor decision making uh, and, and underfunding um, of our health and social care service. Uh, like when it comes to workforce planning, like that has been a massive issue. We don't have enough GPs, but we also don't have enough allied health professionals um, and we don't have enough nurses and uh, unions and, and health care workers and uh, and uh, the trusts have been have been screaming about this workforce issue uh, for a long time. And yeah, there's been moves to, to start to address this. Um, but but you know that is like one of the key things that's happening uh, right now that's uh, crumbling our, our health and social care service and um, and waiting list as well. Someone had mentioned people are having to self manage by themselves in the community and and this is why people are then requiring support of GP services because they've been on waiting lists for far far too long for problems that have, should have been seen to years ago. Uh, people shouldn't have to self manage in this way and it's. This is the result of the crisis of our health, health and social care service, and like a lot needs to be done. Like, um, Councillor Ferguson is right. Everybody is working to their, to their absolute maximum. It's completely unsustainable. Staff, uh, staff in there are just exhausted, demoralised. Um, you know, like people don't know, like don't see how it's going to get any better. And as a result, we have lost staff. We've lost staff, like excellent, committed staff. Have left the health and social care service because um, because it's just it's, it's just so tough um, right now and um, and I think we really need to call out uh, the poor decision making the privatisation. Can you bring your remarks to a close, please? Yeah, um, just saying the privatisation of our health and social care service. We need to call that out as well because we need to bring back um, a lot of our services and the public control. We need to put a lot more investment and pride into health and social care service. And if we think about when the NHS was formed, it was after the Second World War, after like that big crisis. We've just we've just had a, a an like an epic global pandemic. This is the time to properly invest and reform our NHS. Thanks. Thank you, Older Man Tavani. Thank you, Mayor, for allowing me in. And first of all, uh, the GP has no problem uh, in supporting uh, the notice of motion. Uh, and Mayor, we go back um, just. Uh, before COVID, uh, it was discussed in the chamber a number of times in relation to lack of uh, GPs uh, in the Stravan area and the issues in around that. And then along came COVID, then which exacerbated the situation. Uh, and Mayor, as I listen to the you know my constituents out there uh, and even across the whole council area, uh, you know I'm listening to some people say they're getting a good service from their GPs, and others are, um, who have a different story that there has been a difficulty. And I have to say. Mayor uh, and my own GP service, I've needed them two or three times in the last couple of years during COVID. And I have to say, um, uh, uh, they managed my problem and was able to get it sorted. But there is a perception out there from many of the public that GPs aren't working and they aren't uh, um, carrying out their work. But as uh, you know, as, as Councillor Tierney has said, uh, doctors are working tirelessly there. They've been working tirelessly through the COVID, uh, whether it was uh, given jabs or whatever it may be, and uh, look, we would our party would like to put on record our thanks to our GPs and our health staff out there who have worked tirelessly this last couple of years or so in a very very difficult uh, environment. But there is a feeling uh, there that uh, now is the right time to discuss how we plan um, a way forward and, and getting back to some normality that people feel confident that when they they, they 
lift the phone, they can talk to their GP. But I know at some of the, the meetings we had with GPs when they came uh, in to meet us uh, regarding GP services, uh, 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 like one was from Stramatic, I can't remember where that was from. You know, there is always that fallback. You know, when you're going through the triage with the reception, if you ask that you want to speak to a doctor, that has to be carried out, so it has to be. And a doctor should bring you back. But, Mayor, no problem in supporting the notice of motion and anything that brings a bit of normality back to our GPs and to give our, our, our constituents out there within the council area, you know, that, uh, you know, peace of mind that if they do need a doctor, they're at the end oh, of a phone. Man, to many, could you bring the reverse there, please? Finish. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Logue. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and I'd just like to say on behalf of our party, we will be uh, supporting this notice of motion. Um, I'm not going to go on to all the, the issues that are wrong with our health service today. I'm just going to purely speak uh, to, uh, to the motion. And I suppose it has been said already that getting access to face-to-face -face GP appointments has been proven very, very difficult in recent years. And with the onset of COVID-19, this problem has got considerably worse. So much so that we are hearing horror stories of misdiagnosis, cases of if you had it came to me sooner, or actually down to uh, uh, avoidable deaths. With the relaxation of COVID restrictions and many service providers and organisation organisations resuming normal delivery, GP appointment systems appear to be oper operating the telephone interview first then they will decide if an appointment is offered. This is totally unacceptable. And face-to-face -face appointments should be the patient's choice. No EQIA has been uh, carried out on this uh, blanket decision uh, by GP surgeries to um, do a telephone tri triage. And this decision will impact uh, disproportionately uh, negatively on those who are least well off uh, in our society. Um, this cannot be allowed to happen. We are definitely not saying that there is no room for uh, telephone appointments, uh, digital appointments or whatever. But if a patient requires and wants to see a doctor to talk over uh, their, their situation, they should be allowed to do so. This uh, Sir, look, is, could you bring your remarks to a close, please? Yeah, this system is broken and needs uh, sorted as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Fed. Uh, Alderman Guy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we in the Austria Unionist Party will also be supporting this motion. Um, it's obvious that there's been serious problems with our GP surgeries over uh, during the COVID pandemic. Um, but that's not to forget that, that there were issues in our GP surgeries long before COVID. I recall GP practices, and, and I'm not sure which one it was in the city here, but they were working around the clock to clear backlogs. And it was deemed by all our GPs to be an excellent process. So good that it was there was talk about it being rolled out across the city and district to clear backlogs and all our GP surgeries. Perhaps it's time that that was revisited and put on the action again because it's maybe something that's needed to move things along now. I listened to um, Dr. Alan Stout the other day about from the BMA talking about phone lines and, and new phone systems to be put on and how they would seek money from the, the Department of Health. Now, I don't know, I, I'm not up on phone systems and GP surgeries, but I don't think the general public are, were too happy to hear that they were looking for an upgrade of phone systems when they find it hard enough to actually get a face-to-face -face meeting still with their own local GP. And I have to say my own GP surgery was excellent throughout. Uh, I have no problems with it, but I do know of all our GP surgeries in the water side and city side who weren't uh, performing to their uh, patients' needs. We've obviously had uh, the health minister had spoken and tried to work with the finance minister for a three year uh, budget. They actually try and help the broken health care system that we have. Uh, obviously, with the Stormont 
and the executive being brought down, that now will turn to a one-year preliminary and then hopefully a two-year, and that only sets it back further. So I think people need to be uh, look at their actions and the wider uh, case and how it's going to uh, affect everyone else. Thank you, Bear. Um, Councillor Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, thanks to Councillor Donnelly for bringing this forward. So, from the raised myself, along with our local MLA, uh, Claire Daniel McCrossan and Stephen Ebers back last April. Um, it is it's, it's a pandemic itself trying to get people in to see their doctor, and it's something that I'm sure all elected reps across Japan get on a daily basis as a message from their constituents saying, I can't get in to see a doctor. And as, as Councillor Logue rightly says about uh, you phone through the receptionist first, and the receptionist has to uh, determine whether. Um, you see a doctor or not, this is putting great uh, stress on many, many uh, receptionists across all across the district, uh, because they, they, they're then uh, at, the, at, the, at the end of abuse from constituents for not uh, getting in to see the doctor. So 100% an uh, agreement with the motion, but another uh, pandemic in itself within the GP services, the out of hours, the lack of out of, of, out of hours GP service within this, especially this area of the, the council area, is non-existent. Especially in Strabane town itself, um, people have to travel to Derry, uh, Oma, and even further afield to access the doctor after five o'clock in the day, which is an absolute disgrace. So I'll be looking forward to hopefully uh, Robin Swan and Dr. Black uh, coming in uh, to speak to us so we can raise the concer these concerns uh, directly to them. So again, thanks to Councillor Donnelly and as Councillor Tierney stated before, more than happy to support. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Alderman Jose. Uh, Mayor, thank you, um, uh, Councillor Donnelly, thank you for the, the motion. Um, there is a dysfunctionality within uh, all of our health service. Uh, indeed, my own personal doctor uh, has expressed his concerns. Um, and I agree with 90% of your motion. But why do you have to? invite the incumbent six county health minister why can't you say the northern ireland health minister robin swan thank you thank you for that Alderman, i'll say it closer gallagher thank you mayor for letting them understand and uh thank you Councillor Donnelly, for bringing this back in again i uh, and, and when this came up front and like I uh, quote the previous time and again tonight just like to emphasize this isn't about GP passion uh, since the last motion I and other councillors have, have met with the GPs in the Straban uh, we've heard their predicament and their case and fully understand how, uh, where they come from and um, the reason this motion is coming back up again and will continue to come back up again is because our residents treat the GP services as a very valuable service and when it's not getting fully implemented then that's why they're coming to elected members and they want the service put back fully and to be fully implemented and it's not within the gift of the GPs to do that. They've had funding cuts. They've had GPs that are just work to the bone I, and have give up. And recruitment of GPs is very difficult. So the resolution of this has to come from on high. GPs have Hi, to Sir, be Gallagher, could you bring your remarks there close, please? Yes. They have to be given the resources to deliver this valuable service to our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. And finally, last speaker will be Councillor Money. Uh, thank you, Chair. And uh, just, to just to refer back to um, the start of the meeting that I had, I, I declared my interest. And uh, what I'm going to do is I abstained in the last motion and in the interest of consistency, I'll be abstaining this motion. 
But just to say that I found the debate agreeable in that way, that was actually very good and it outlined that this is definitely a um, a complex multifactorial fact, multifactorial problem and uh, that there is definitely a crisis within the GP primary care services Amazon secondary care as well but uh, apart from that chair just like they say that I'll be abstaining anyway but thank you thank you Councillor Ryan 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 I did chair I, because on, on on the last motion I abstained and I said on the interest of consistency, I'll be abstaining on this motion due to my declaration of interest. Thank you. Okay, members, there's no further speakers on this. Um, members, somebody bring on Councillor Donnelly now. Thank you, uh, chair, and and. Um, just a massive thanks to, to everybody who, who spoke here tonight. But one thing I don't want people taking away from this, and it's been mentioned a number of times, yeah. it's not, a, a, as Councillor Gallagher said, a GP passion uh, exercise. I, you know, I can only pay tribute to, to GPs and those who have dedicated their lives uh, to helping others. Uh, so I pay tribute to them and their staff. The staff can only operate the system that, that, that they're allowed to. Uh, and they shouldn't be getting abused or or, or any type of of, of uh, blame. Uh, you know, there's a lot said here tonight. Uh, don't want to go into a lot of it again. But one thing that did was said by uh, Councillor O'Neill is that we're that the, the health service is uh, losing valuable staff, and that is is something that any uh, nurse. Will 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 point out to, you. Uh, and the other thing is that I do believe that behind this is is that the the health service is under attack from privatisation. But listen, thanks to everybody for for their support. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Dolly. Okay, members. Um, obviously, where there is one member of standing, but is there any other member standing or going against the motion? I think it's. Everybody support that, could you? So members, there's only right. there's an or, there's an order one question from McKelly. What I'm going to do, John, I'm just going to bring it over to you for a vote then. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Alder Beslow. Four. Alderman Devaney. Four, John. Alderman Guy. Alderman Guy. Alderman Hussey. On the basis of Senator uh, Donnelly's description of our health minister, abstain. Alderman Carrigan. Uh, abstain, Alderman John. Carr Stand. Alderman McClintock. Hello, sir. <laughs> you heard me. Uh, Four, uh, members, members, could you just check that your mics are on mute? There's someone there with a lot of background noise. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman McClintock. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Four, John. Thank you. Alderman McCready. Four. Alderman Ramsey. Four. Alderman Wark. Four. Four. Councillor Jason Barr? Four. Councillor Raymond Barr? Four. Councillor John Boyle? Four. Councillor Michaela Boyle? Four. Councillor Carr? Four. Councillor Cusick? Four. Councillor Dobbins? Four, John. Councillor Donnelly? Four. Councillor Doyle? Four. Councillor Duffy? Four. Councillor Edwards? Four, John. Councillor Farrell. Four. Councillor Ferguson. Four, John. Councillor Fleming. Four, John. Councillor Gallagher. Four. Councillor Harkin. Four. Councillor Heaney. Sorry, John. Um, Councillor Heaney had to step out. Thank you. Councillor Jackson. Four, John. Councillor Kelly. Four. Councillor Luke. Four. Councillor McGinley. 
for John. Councillor McGowan. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McGuire. Councillor McHugh. Or. Councillor McKeever. Or. Councillor McKinney. I'm staying. Excuse me, I'm staying. I'm staying. Councillor Mooney. I'm staying. Councillor O'Neill. Or. Councillor Riley. Or. Councillor Stenoy Barr. Sorry, say again, Councillor Sinai Bar. Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Tierney. Four, John. Thank you. Mayor, I've recorded 33 for no one against and four abstentions. Thank you. Okay, members, the the motion passes so well done. Oh, members, um, I'm aware that the time now is coming up to ten past eight. So what I'm going to do, we're going to take a a break now and I will see you members at 25 to 9. So what else got time for time for when you're having fun. So members, I'll see you very soon. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, members, uh, welcome back. Um, moving on now, we're going to bring up the motion of college for the boy. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll take it as read. If get Thank a second. Yeah. We'll second. Thank you, Mayor Jason Barr. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Go ahead there, Councillor Barr. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barr. Uh, following representations from sporting bodies across the Strabane district for the provision of floodlighting at the arena pitch at Melbourne Sports Complex and the transfer to Council of the existing football pitch at Lisnafin Park to allow for its further development. I have submitted this two part motion and I hope to secure the support for this motion to pass, which will provide better opportunities for those involved with sports locally across and across the Strabane district. In the first part of the motion, I'm calling upon Council to further enhance the arena pitch at Melvin to include the provision of floodlights, which will further benefit sports clubs across the Strabane district and allow clubs to progress to a higher grade. And for those clubs that are already playing at a higher grade, this will ensure sustainability within the leagues they play moving forward. I believe the overall benefits of having a floodlit facility will enhance sporting participation and recreation across the Strabane area, especially in the winter months. Mayor, if this motion passes, I'm calling on Council to provide a timeline for completion of further upgrade to include flood lighting at the Melvin Arena pitch. In the second part of the motion, I'm calling upon Council to explore the transfer of the pre-existing football pitch at Lisnafin Park from the Housing Executive into Council ownership so as to allow for its further development. The pitch at Lisnafin Park has been an ever-present at the centre of the estate, providing sporting facilities for the local community and sporting clubs. The work to date carried out by the Lisnafin Ardna League Trust, alongside the Strabane Neighbourhood Renewal Growth Partnership, must be commended. However, further work within this process to bring it to fruition must be realised. The transfer and redevelopment of this facility would massively increase sport and recreation in the area. One of the Neighbourhood Renewal Partnership's strategic objective is to ensure that people living in this Neighbourhood Renewal area have access to the best possible services and opportunities that make for better quality of life and better prospects, and the creation of a safer environment to live and play in with better enhanced recreational outdoor facilities. The local community and coaches within the area have been to the fore, calling on the pitch to be upgraded and to be better utilised that would benefit the area and across the whole of the district. Mayor, I hope this motion is supported. Thank you, Councillor Akila Boyle. Um, moving on, Councillor Barr. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank Councillor Boyle for bringing this motion to Council and agree totally with the sentiments expressed. With clubs like Stavane Athletics, Science Hoffs and Stavane Rugby Club developing and expanding at a rapid pace, demand for facilities in Stavane has far each triple supply and it's important we facilitate those young people who have taken an interest in and want to pursue their chosen sport. I would however like to add a, an, an amendment or a, an addition to the motion which I think is very relevant. Um, if you could just put up on the screen, I passed that on to Capelli on, on Monday. We take the uh, amendment as read there. Um, this plan application was passed through Council's plan department in March 2021. And the same month, the decision was referred to the Minister's department as its protocol for decisions which uh, overturn the planner's recommendation. In January 2022, the club was informed the decision had been called on. This project has no objection from residents and received unanimous, unanimous support at the planning stage. The club waited from 2018 until 2021 to get this project to the planning stage at a huge cost to the club. The delay is put in at risk not only the purchase of the land, but potential significant investment from the private sector. These concerns need to be addressed without further delay. It's admirable that this club has embarked on such an ambitious project. Their sincerity can be gauged by the amount of money they have invested so far. Money raised by the people of Stravan. The club needs encouragement, uh, not hurdles. Um, if, if Council can write to the, to the Minister and, and ask her to expedite the, this application, it would be greatly appreciated by the club. 
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ruben Barr, Councillor Jason Barr. Thank you, Mayor. For me in. Uh, I'll just speak on uh, both uh, the original and the amendment. Um, we in the SDLP are happy to support both, um, but I'll speak on the original first. Um, uh, very timely uh, for Councillor Boyle uh, to bring this forward as uh, just after the upgrade of the stand there and uh, down at the arena pitch in Melbourne, which is very, very welcome to see, uh, which will now uh, further further enhance the support and uh, enhance support within the area of Straban and further afield. And again, I think that the floodlights, uh, provision of floodlights would add uh, again further benefit uh, to sports clubs across the town. And again, then crossing over to the part of uh, the transfer and the development of the land that must have been pitch. Uh, very welcome this. Again, we're brought forward by uh, Michaela. Um, it's a great area for potential and, and a great area to develop for the people of Lusty Fun and the wider area around it. And then uh, for uh, Raymond Barr's uh, amendment, uh, yep, again, very, very tightly. Uh, more than happy to support this uh, for, for Strabane Athletic to further uh, develop their, their dreams and ambitions. Uh, for that site to be developed so that uh, the football community within Straban can have the highest potential which they deserve. So happy to support all of it. Mayor William the SDLP, thank you very much. Thank you for Councillor Jason Parr. Uh, Alderman Devere, do you want to speak on the amendment? Yep, uh, thank you Mayor. Um, I will speak on the amendment and speak to the original motion. Uh, the DEP has no problem in supporting the original motion. And the amendment here I think is very, very timely. And as Councillor Boyle has said, um, you know, uh, about enhancing um, the leisure and recreation facilities in the Straban area, it's vitally important that, that we do move on this and move it forward. And look, I, I do believe that floodlights should be part and parcel of every facility now because it allows them to become a year round facility, not just uh, in the clear evenings or the summertime. On the, the, the amendment, look, uh, no problem in supporting the amendment coming in for Stramad Athletic Club, as we heard previously, that this went through on the plan and application. And uh, look, I think we should be raising to the aspirations of and helping uh, facilitate the Stramad Athletic Club in their aspirations uh, as they move forward. And look, uh, I could add to this list, you know, we have other recreational others like areas like Balamagori that has no play park facilities, but look, uh, I'll leave this as it sits tonight, but Mayor, very, very happy to support uh, the amendment and uh, the motion. Thank you, Fred Alderman Tavere. Okay, Councillor Gallagher, the amendment. I'll just, I'll speak the whole lot. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Go ahead. I uh, just on the original. Yes. I, uh, happy to support the motion and thank Councillor Boyd for bringing it forward. And I think that uh, that particularly like the floodlights has has been in included in through the capital works group, uh, and due to the extension and all the rest and the new development, uh, the floodlights were put to one side. But but during that process, uh, a, a lot of people accused council of providing this facility for Stab Athletic, which is and wasn't correct, and. With the installation of floodlights, it'll allow other users to avail of it that can't, currently can't use it because of uh, uh, regulations that are implemented by the certain sporting bodies. So, uh, again, it needs to be brought forward in stage two and implemented. And again, plus the fun, the business case was done through the neighborhood renewal. And I think that uh, Council needs to. Bring that forward again. Just regarding the amendment, I think that this was a plan application that came through council. It was processed uh, and it was approved. And I think that this application requires very much the justice of the process. It's been sitting dormant for almost a year, and I don't think that's good enough. That a group that has invested a lot of of its own money, uh, a voluntary group that raised money, spent money on this project, and is sitting a year doing nothing after being approved by the planning committee. So I think that this needs to be expedited uh, immediately. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Gallagher. Okay, members, I see no further speakers on the amendment, and I'm not hearing any descending voices. Anybody look at the abstain or go against the amendment? Could you let me know now in the chat box or on the screen? Okay, members, the amendment passes. Moving on to the substantial motion, I see no further members coming on, so we'd like to bring Councillor Michaela Boyle now on the sum up. Michaela? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And um, thanks um, also to Councillor Barr for bringing in the amendment, which I support, albeit it is separate to the motion. Um, and I would be happy to share with Councillor Barr uh, or MLA Malisha McHugh had wrote to the minister and actually received a response today uh, from the Minister of Infrastructure. Um, and I would be happy to share that that with them um, and, and the other sparing uh, councillors also. Um, I want to thank P for the sparing councillors for speaking to the motion. Um, obviously, there is a deficit across the district in terms of provision. And, you know, we're not asking anything um, that isn't doable. We're just asking for, obviously, the listen of fun pitch to be brought up to a standard um, where it can be utilised to benefit the whole of the community and the district. Um, currently, at the minute, um, it's, it's, a, it's in a state of, um, you know, it's not being able to be utilised because of, obviously, the weather conditions hamper it. And dog, you know, it's open, so dog fouling, people allow their dogs to roam free and dog dirt uh, is left along the pitch and stuff. So I'm um, happy for for, for the, those people who spoke in support of it and um, look forward to um, Council bringing forward both projects to fruition as soon as possible um, and as soon as the process allows them to do so. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks to everybody who supported the motion. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Michaela Boyd. Okay, members, uh, is there any dissenting voices or anybody um, looking at the abstain or against the substantial motion here? Could you let me know now on the chat box or on the screen? Okay, members, the substantial uh, motion passes unanimous. Members, moving on now. To Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mayor. Can I have the motion as read? Yeah, have you a second there, Councillor O'Neill? Second that, Mayor Lillian Senoy. Thank you, Lillian Senoy. Okay, go ahead there, Councillor O'Neill. Um, yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, International Women's Day was born from women's demands for equal pay, shorter working hours, and voting rights. Um, and yeah, women's equality has come a long way since 1908, uh, but we still have a long way to go to realise full equality. And the role of women-led and feminist movements to achieve this goal is essential. Unfortunately, here we've got a crisis uh, in gender-based violence. Stats show that the North is the most dangerous place in Europe for women, with more domestic violence killings here per capita than anywhere else. That's absolutely shocking. We've had far too many drink spiking incidences here in the council area. And we're also seeing in Belfast at the moment, the attempted closure of the Regina Coley Hostel, which protects and cares for women. Women here have been let down by the state for far too long. Our bodies have been controlled and policed with the denial of reproductive rights. Policies from the state on the two child benefit cap, policies that have seen the massive levels of child poverty in the North, Policies that don't support women after they have a baby, charging for childcare, um, are policies that really impact women hardest. And there's still a gender pay gap. There's still the mass commodification of women's bodies, and there's far few women in leadership roles. We also need to stop pretending that everyone is impacted by things equally, and we need to take a proper look at the structural inequalities that exist in our society. And the pandemic, as many have argued, has been a great revealer lay and bare pre-existing structural inequalities of class, gender and race. The current cost of living crisis is adding further burden, impacting women hardest. This is why the Feminist Recovery Plan is referred to in the motion as, an, as a really excellent piece of work, uh, which helps to focus our efforts to rebuild society in a way which addresses these structural inequalities 
and there's many things that council can do about this. The WRDA have also conducted research as part of the executive office's call for views in the violence against women and girls strategy. And two, in two and a half weeks that their consultation was open, they got 1,065 responses. Um, and I, when I was speaking to them there, they said over an overwhelming response had been that we need to have a focus on men. And another dominant response has been the inadequate relationship and sexual education in our schools. And that's why I think it would be very good to have a children's commissioner in as well. Finally, Mayor, if you allow me, I want to commend the feminist movement here on the ground who have campaigned tirelessly for these issues to be brought to the fore. I think of the woman locally who have inspired generations of feminists, like the woman who squatted in Pump Street for the first woman's aid refuge to support women and their families experience domestic abuse. I want to also think of the woman involved in the anti-war movement who got Raytheon out of Derry and the woman and feminist who campaigned for reproductive rights and supported pregnant people to access abortion even when it was illegal. And the inspiring woman involved in many social justice campaigns to make society a better and more just and equal place for everyone. Um, so it's important to remember those movements that have come before us as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Coach, for this flat there. Uh, Overman Hussey, you looking on there? Okay, uh, Councillor Stephen Barr. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me in, and um, thank you, Councillor O'Neill, for bringing this very timely motion. Mayor, this year's theme for International Women's Day is shining a light on gender equality with its hashtag Break the Bias campaign. Achieving gender equality and empowerment for women and girls is the unfinished business of our time and the greatest human rights challenge in our world today. It is shocking that even in the 21st century, we are still fighting for rights and respect, that as women, we are still imagining a gender equal world, a world free of bias, stereotype and discrimination, and a world where our differences are valued and celebrated. And even though women are now able to achieve careers in traditionally male-dominated occupations, too often women are harassed, assaulted, and even denied opportunities for careers progression. Here in the North, statistics on male violence against women are shocking. While violence against women and girls is a hidden global crisis, that does not know boundaries or geography or or any culture. Councillor O'Neill has already outlined that the north of Ireland is the most dangerous place in Europe to be a woman, with three times more murders of women than England or Wales. Yet the north of Ireland is the only part of these islands without a strategy to tackle violence against women and girls. We had two strategies which were put out for consultation. The new domestic and sexual violence strategy, which was led by the Department of Health and the Department for Justice, and a new violence against women and girls strategy led by the executive office. But with the current storm on crisis, which was caused by the DUP, women have to wait again. Living free from fear and violence is a basic human right, and we must ensure adequate protection for all women, online, offline, and especially at home. And on behalf of SDLP, I welcome the opportunity to hear from the Women Resource and Development Agency. On a personal level, I have a keen interest on an intersection of feminist recovery plan that includes migrant and refugee women, temporary migrants, older people, and people with disabilities. In my view, it is important to consider intersectionality and how other factors such as class, race, and sexuality may Remember, impact. Remember, uh, could you bring your remarks to close, please? Without an intersectional lens, our efforts to target injustice against women may even end up perpetuating systemic uh, systems of inequality. So we full support this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members. Um, reminder to you, we have uh, two minutes. We'll cover back in the motion. Uh, Councillor Ferguson. 
Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Neen for bringing this motion forward. I think it is a very timely motion. I think it's something the Council should highlight, and I think it's an absolutely fantastic idea. International Women's Day is a great way to highlight many inequalities. inequalities. I know uh, Councillor Neen and Councillor Sione Barr had highlighted some. You know, women have inequalities in our health care. We have one menopause clinic in the whole of Northern Ireland. We have no 30 hour free childcare here. We have of inequalities to access to healthcare, for example, with gynecology, the, the the fact that it is three times more likely to be murdered here in the north. It's just you could talk all night about it. I think we do see some progression, and it's because we have women around the table. We have this discussion happening. We have menopause uh, policies coming in. We have miscarriage policies coming in, and I'm really pleased to see the likes of the SH24 come out, where you can order contraceptives and emergency contraceptives online and have it delivered. I think these are great initiatives, but they're only the, the building blocks. They're the, only the foundation. We need to move forward. I think that the last part of the motion is brilliant, Maeve. I think having an age appropriate, inclusive, standardised relationship sex education across all our schools is what we need. We can change attitudes towards women. We can even empower our young ones and we can tackle things like domestic violence by showing our young people what a healthy relationship looks like, building confidence in our youth and explaining aspects of relationships. And it's not just about um, abstention or reproduction. It's about how to look after yourself and how to grow and how do you know the signs for coercive control and domestic violence. I think this is a, a absolutely brilliant motion. Um, so well done, Maeve, uh, for bringing it forward and we fully support it and look forward to the, the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ferguson. Councillor McGinley. Um, on behalf of Sinn Féin, um, I'd like to as well thank um, me for bringing this motion forward. It is really, really important and the motion is, is brilliant. Um, we'll be fully in support of that. Um, uh, all the other speakers have already touched on the reasons for why we need this motion to be passed. Um, I'm not going to rehash or, or sit and repeat um, what's already been said. Um, but just to concur with the previous speakers, it is positive that we're seeing progress on the violence against women and girls strategy, despite the situation that we have in Stormont um, as a result of the DEP walking out, um, and that the progress of legislation such as the stalking bills and that have started to um, to progress a bit further. Um, I'm looking forward to the the meeting that's being proposed um, in this motion, um, and I think it's it's brilliant that the the Women's Resource and Development Agency and the Children's Commissioner are being, uh, Commissioner are being invited in to meet with us um, and to lay out their proposals. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, thanks, me, for bringing this forward. Thank you, Fred, Councillor Gilly. And finally, um, sorry, it's not finally, Alderman Ramsey. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Councillor O'Neill, for bringing this very timely motion uh, to Council. And I would just like to concur with all the previous speakers. And uh, the DEP fully support this motion tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fat. Uh, Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mayor, and, and thanks to Councillor Lee for bringing this forward. Um, I attended a, um, a Zoom uh, briefing or discussion that uh, Councillor Ferguson um, and some of her party colleagues had set up um, a few months ago uh, with the WRDA, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I think there were some other members um, present as well. I think maybe Councillor Gall Donnelly was there. And you know, it's it, it, it's timely, this motion, uh, particularly around stories that, that have you know, got to the press um, around um, women having been attacked, women having been murdered um, in this uh, on this island. Um, and it's it's also time, I think, for, for men, and including myself in that, to Put our hands up and say that you know for us to think that we have the uh the answers to um questions that don't necessarily um that we don't necessarily experience is something that, that we need to do um you know i had a, a recent conversation with a, a group of women around uh endometriosis um i had a, a discussion with uh, a lady this week around the new perinatal mental health team that's being recruited in the western trust which is is progress 
Um, there are things that, uh, with regards to um, some of what may come out on the the an ether around um, what Councillor O'Neill refers to as reproductive rights that we may well uh, disagree on. Um, but I have to say that I stand very proudly to say that I support this motion. Um, we do need to have these discussions uh, because if it's uh, if there isn't equality uh, in society um, between the sexes um, in 2022, there's something very, very wrong with the direction that we're going on. Um, so I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Doyle. Uh, Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Chair. Uh, no, agree with the motion. Happy to support. You know, uh, women, particularly women here in Ireland, have led the way in, 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 in the struggle, uh, you know, as it says in the motion, struggle for rights and equality. But the women in Ireland have also uh, played a very, very significant and at times uh, not recognised struggle for Irish freedom. And I'm thinking of, of you know, women like Braid Farrell, Constance Markovich, Maya Drum, Ethel Lynch, people like that. Constance Markovich was the first woman elected the, the West Minister. She was the first female cabinet minister in Europe. Uh, you know, so uh, agree with the motion and and uh, happy to support. Thank you, Councillor Donnelly. Uh, members, I see no further speakers there, so I'm going to bring it back to Councillor O'Neill. Sum up, Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mayor, and thanks to everyone for their words of support. Um, I think this uh, special council meeting is is very timely. It's very important because, unfortunately, we are a long way off from uh, true gender equality. Uh, we live in a very patriarchal society, and there's very there's many structural ways in which women um, are are still very unequal. Um, so I think if I think it would be great to hear from um, these two um, people, uh, WRDA and the Children's Commissioner. And um, I think if there's any actions that council can do as a result of this, then I think that will be very welcome and very positive. So thank you again for uh, all the words of support. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for council. Um, members, I'm not here no to send in voices on this motion. Is there any member looking to abstain or go against it? Could you let me know now on the chat box or on the screen? Okay, members, the motion of Council O'Neill passes. Okay, moving on to Council Hargan, the last motion, members. Let will just get up on the screen here. Thank you. Councillor Hargan. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, with members' permission, I would like to make an alteration to my motion to include uh, what I put in the chat box there. I second that, Chair. Out. Members, what are you bringing the city slots for your fault? Oh. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I did have the opportunity of uh, discussing this earlier on um, this afternoon. Um, as members will be aware, uh, an alteration to a motion um, must overcome three hurdles uh, to be acceptable. Um, firstly, um, at, at which it has been done, it must be um, sought to be made before it can be seconded, before the motion is seconded. Um, Secondly, it requires the consent of the meeting, so it would require the consent of every uh, one of the members present. Um, but thirdly, and probably in this case most significantly, alterations can only be made if they would be acceptable as an amendment. Amendments are dealt with under Standing Order 17, um, and Standing Order 17.1.1 sets out a number of criteria that an amendment must meet uh, before it is acceptable. Um, and within that, uh, if members uh, look at that standing order, there is a requirement that the amendment must not place a greater responsibility in the meeting than the original proposal. Um, this notice of motion um, did not 
really uh, have any uh, thing in it which would have required expenditure by the council. Uh, the amendment uh, requires expenditure by the council of three million pounds out of reserves. So I would be of the view that that would place um, a, a greater responsibility on the meeting than the original proposal, Chair. Mayor. Mayor, I propose uh, that we deal with the original motion. I was checking that, uh, Mayor. Okay, members, we have heard the city solicitor on that one. Um, um, I'm going to go back to the normal motion of Councillor Hargan. So, Councillor Hargan, do you want to go ahead? Okay, well, look, I think that it's very disappointing that we couldn't discuss this proposal um, to set up a hardship emergency fund using £3 million that the Council has. Uh, we are in a cost of living emergency. And we know that a lot of people are struggling. Uh, we've seen people going up today to Firmus Energy and Antrim protesting and demanding um, action. We've seen hundreds of people already gather in Derry at the uh, Derry Against Fuel Poverty protest. And I think this is just the beginning uh, of these protests. Through When the pandemic happened, we had government move mountains in order to take action. Um, the, the Westminster gave uh, billions to corporations. Uh, you know, you, you, there was money pouring out of everywhere. And we have to ask, where is the urgency now that uh, when it's working class people, when it's ordinary people, when it's the vulnerable, when it's organizations that are not uh, connected to the elites, where is the help? And there is very, very little help getting through to people. And I would describe the government action, business action, and regulatory action so far as criminally inadequate. And we are heading towards a situation where extreme poverty is going to grow in our district and right across uh, our society. Um, and I think that people want to see radical action taken. And a radical action would have been uh, for us to uh, abandon uh, processes that block uh, action so that we can actually do something for the people in the district. And that would have been setting up this hardship emergency fund as we've done before during the pandemic. Um, people want to see the big corporations get properly taxed. It's amazing to me that, Organi that BP and Shell don't pay taxes. And why isn't Stormont at, at the forefront of campaigning for a new wealth tax on the billionaires and the big corporations that have done so well out of the pandemic. Uh, there's been no effort to ask the big corporations, uh, Tesco, Sainsbury's, who've profited hugely during the pandemic, to um, pay a fair share to, to make sure people don't throw up, fall into destitution. So I think we should back the call for a new wealth tax. I think it's clear that Stormont and the executive parties need a break from their policy of backing uh, below inflation pay increases, which are really pay cuts. Um, so we need to give it, send a clear message that we back all efforts now for real pay increases. Uh, and finally, I think the last part of this is probably the most important because where there's a failure of government action, there's a failure of business action. And I think that that means it's going to be a people power movement right now uh, that's already started in Derry, but it's going to spread and it's going to spread across this island. It's going to spread across these islands uh, to try and rebalance the massive inequality that we are seeing develop. Um, all in my time in uh, council, we have talked about an anti-poverty strategy. Councillor Hargan, Hargan, could you bring your remarks to a close, please? I will finish in this. We talked about an anti-poverty strategy coming from Stormont, and the reality is deprivation, poverty and inequality have actually increased, and they're now increasing by mammoth levels. And uh, people are desperate for action, and unfortunately, uh, there is not enough of that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next one is Councillor Doyle. Thanks, Mayor, and uh, happy to second the motion, as I said earlier. Um, there are times when I genuinely ask myself what 
the point of this council is and why we are all sitting at this meeting whenever it's fairly obvious that there are people out there at the minute genuinely sitting in their houses freezing. Um, I'm not a radical by any means, and I think people know that, but I would have happily supported this motion um, that, that Sean had, uh, and the, the amendment that Sean had brought because people are asking, what is the point of uh, councils? What is the point of MLAs and MPs um, when we're able to talk plenty? But when it comes to action, uh, we find that we're constrained by rules that don't seem to recognise uh, that there are actual people out there who are suffering. And, you know, over the last number of weeks in particular, um, we, we've seen the manifestation of protests um, in, in Guildhall Square. And I spoke at that. And one of the questions I had to ask myself was, where was everybody else? You know, we've an MP with five MLAs, we have a record councillors, and... Those who I'm told are the ones that make decisions, the MPs, the MLAs, they weren't there. Now, that sends out a message. There are people who are genuinely, and I said this before at that, at that event, we are going to be seeing people being taken out of their homes in body bags because they have had died of hypothermia in 2020 in their own homes. None of the executive parties have done anything about this apart from blame each other. It doesn't matter who makes decisions around these issues, but it does matter when no one makes decisions about them. It's absolutely scandalous. And when they go knock on doors in the next couple of months, and Thank the, you, the question is asked, you bring your the question is, I've all certainly, the question is Thank asked, you. what did you do? They won't have an answer, but I'm sure that they'll come up with something. Thank you, uh, Councillor Doyle. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Thanks, Mayor. Um, and obviously, we support uh, uh, what the um, alteration that uh, that Sean had put forward. And I just want to say, like, you know, that was a real opportunity to really do something here in in this crisis. Um, like this cost of love and crisis, as Councillor Doyle has said, is co is costing lives. Uh, right now, and it's going to cost more lives. Fuel poverty kills a third of excess uh, winter deaths every year is due to fuel poverty, and I'm sure that's a lot worse this year, given the the cold weather conditions that we're having at the moment, um, as well as the massive increases in um, in uh, the cost of living. And I, I think, um, like you know, Sean uh, did a lot of uh, research work. Uh, with poverty anti-poverty activists, with uh, fuel poverty experts, um, and and thinking about what what can council do on this, and that's and I think if the will, I think the, if the will was there among this council as a whole to have accepted that alteration, regardless of the uh, process, then you know what I think I think we should have jumped on that opportunity because I think it would have been something. That uh, really would have uh, had a direct impact in helping people here living in field poverty at the moment. Um, so I, I just want to commend the Dairy Against Field Poverty activists who have been incredible in their campaign to highlight this issue. They were speaking on uh, Talkback during the week as well, and and they they really did the, the campaign proud. And I just want to um, make an amendment to the motion just uh, to. And so that for council to support uh, the next protest that's happening on the fifth of March um, in Waterloo Place, um, calling for action on the cost of living crisis. Thanks. Yeah, happy enough that one seconded by uh, Councillor Boy. Okay, members, there's the amendment on here. Um, Councillor, sorry, excuse me. Alderman Kerrigan, do you want to speak on the amendment? Uh, I suppose I, I'll, I'll speak here on the two, Mayor. Uh, I'll yeah, brief, fine. Brief on it there. Um, uh, Mayor, um, I, I have a lot of sympathy where, where uh, Councillor uh, O'Harkin is coming from there. And again, I... 
there is real difficulties and i mean we know with the price of electricity we know with the price of, of fuel there i've seen it there and charitable groups as well uh, of the price of even just the running costs the price of uh, has increased dramatically and that's affecting everybody and everybody's getting caught with that and i know there as well mayor i mean I, i've worked there with individuals there in regards to a, a small fuel grant there which has come in through sh should it be the bryson group there uh, and again Bernardo was there, provided uh, a funding there towards uh, DEAs within our council uh, there. So, as I say, Mayor, I'm well aware of it, and, and we are aware of it. And to be fair, I, if there was a fund set up, should it be Stormont or whatever, uh, you know, or, or we would be able to sit, you know, as the council to try to do something in regards to fuel poverty. But again, we cannot be just wiping out our reserves. Because you know we go through it every year with Alfie uh, and and regards to our rich process, uh, and there are some that that will uh, that won't support our rich, but yet would be calling on us to spend. Um, so, Mayor, I have those I have those wee issues there with it, and I do note there, you, you know, the difficulty I see with this is here. Don't like the term criminally inadequate in there. Don't like that term in it. And querying just as well, what actions is he calling for? He states in there, supports the protest and actions. I just want clarity on what actions are, are they seeking to call upon. Um, the above inflation wage rises, we don't set our wages here. The wages are set up uh, 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 higher up the, uh, the line, and we, we then take that wage uh, and have to set it then to our workers within the council. So that's outside our remit there. Uh, but Mayor, I would just finally point out there. I mean, you know, Councillor Harkin has given a touch there. He's given a touch to Westminster. He stated that all this COVID money went to fat cats and big corporations. But yet, I know many people, many small businesses who survived only with the assistance of furlough, only the assistance of the bounce back loan, only with the assistance of the self employment income support scheme grants. It didn't help everybody, but some people did help. Uh, Alderman, could you bring your remarks? Yeah, 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 very, very, very briefly, Mayor. And Mayor, he does give a dig, always a dig to Westminster, but yet there's no mention of the corporation tax in the, in the Republic of Ireland, 12.5%, a tax haven that, that Westminster that is 19%. So, I mean, there's no dig at that, but that doesn't surprise me with Councillor Harkin at all. Um, but uh, no, and again, he's mentioned corporations. Every limited company is a corporation. So one man band that's a plumber, he wants him taxed more heavily. Uh, you know, everybody else is to pay with these motions that people before profit bring. Oh, you know. Alderman Kerrigan. Thank you. Um, Councillor Donnelly, do you want to speak on the amendment? Yes, Chair. Speaking a lot. Thank you. Uh, no issue. We, we, the motion, Chair, or, or the one that uh, Councillor Harkin had refused. Chair, see the reality is politicians are... Reality is politicians are moved from the reality of of what's going on on a daily basis. Ordinary people are 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 going hungry, and you know, and, and they were going hungry whilst you know at the start of the pa pandemic, you know, certain MLA stocking up on hundreds of pounds of butcher meat they freeze, whilst then only hours later having a photo shoot handing out food parcels. The people, you know, we there's no there's there's no money for nurses teachers health infrastructure but watch the unfolding war watch where billions of pounds will be made available to destroy and kill whilst those and, and and this is this is will be paid out of out of taxpayers money whilst ordinary people will struggle to heat or eat criminals criminals is the right word criminals is you know the, the tories have a smash and grab on on on, on the health service creating contracts and jobs for their families and friends. So criminal is probably, you know, the stronger words that I would use, only, only uh, I would probably get into trouble in this. So I have no, no, no power supporting the, uh, the motion and the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Donnelly. Councillor McKinney. Uh, thank you, Mayor, for letting me in. <clears throat> Uh, we support Councillor Harkin's uh, motion, and, and can I just say that uh, Rachel and myself did attend the uh, last meeting at the Guildhall, and will probably attend the, the next one as well. But there was a distinct, distinct lack of of uh, attendance from larger parties. But that's by the by, you know. But I do have a bit of an issue with uh, Councillor Harkin's motion. There, it's just a bit where it says statement on wealth tax. 
Uh, I I would like to sort of clarify that because to be quite honest, there's people out there who have worked very hard to gain uh, wealth, and I think it's wrong that they should be actually punished and have to pay more tax just because they worked harder and maybe were entrepreneurs and got where they are on their own. With regards to corporation tax, I totally agree. We need to increase the corporation tax, especially companies like uh, Firmus, whose pre-tax profits uh, shot up by 60% in 2019 to 12.2 12, 12 million pounds. And today there was a 33.57% increase uh, on the tariff kicked in. Uh, this is uh, works at about 5.95 per week per average household, which is scandalous. And also I'd like to point out BP posted a profit of 9.5 billion as of the 8th of February this year. So I believe corporation tax must be increased and HMRC need to tighten up on the loopholes that allow large corporations to avoid uh, paying due taxes. And uh, I'm not going to mention them in case I get the uh, Taken the court. Thank you. Thank you, Frau Councillor. Can the Councillor Duffy? Gurmagat Mayor and um, Gurmagat Day, Sean, for bringing the motion. And I'm happy to speak to both. Um, no one here can claim that they've been untouched by this global cost of living crisis. Um, we are contacted on a daily basis by struggling families. Um, and we are working with many within the foundry and statutory agencies to help find resolutions to the immediate crisis that people are facing. Um, and the crisis that the people are facing, it's not just people, it, it's affecting so many more people in the working poor, and, you know, that would never have come to us before in these situations. And they're really struggling um, with it in the face of a constant stream of rising prices of gas, of oil, and which will undoubtedly now be exasperated even further by the overnight events in, in Ukraine. Sinn Féin recognises that workers and families are struggling with the global cost of living, and we will continue to oppose the attempts by the Tories to exasperate the problems that people face. But Sinn Féin just won't talk about it. We will actually do what we can and what is within our gift. And that's why the Communities Minister, Deidre Hargy, had announced the 55 million energy payment support scheme for vulnerable people struggling to meet rising energy costs due to the global fuel crisis. That was within her gift, and that is something that she did. Um, Sinn Féin Finance Minister, Conor Murphy, has reiterated his calls on the British government to scrap the VAT on energy bills to help families tackle the cost of living crisis. This could immediately cut, cut household costs by at very least 5%. Sinn Féin has also called on the British government to scrap the proposals to increase national insurance contributions, as this will be yet another tax increase on working families who are already struggling. We have proposed that a one-fall tax is implemented on large energy companies with extortionate profits, such as BP. The revenue raised could then be redirected towards tackling fuel poverty and supporting families. Those on low wages and those in insecure work are very exposed to the rising bills and cost of living. Sinn Féin is focused on ending precarious work in the form of zero hour contracts, and we are committed to giving workers the real living wage as the minimum standard of pay. Conor Murphy has made it a condition that companies delivering public contracts will have to pay at least the real living wage. Sinn Féin will continue to do everything in our power to stand up for workers and families. Thank you, uh, Councillor Luffy. Uh, Councillor Farrell, do you want to speak on the amendment? Uh, I'll speak on both. We're happy Perfect. to support Thank the you. amendment, uh, Mayor. So here, the SDLP supports this motion. It is very apparent that Brexit uh, and the spiral in energy prices have created a cost of living crisis, which will push households right across the north uh, deeper into poverty. But in all honesty, I feel uh, Councillor Harkin has a brass neck proposing this. This is about a cost of living crisis and people before profit had the opportunity two weeks ago to vote against the cost of living increase, namely the rates, and they didn't turn up. They were nowhere to be seen. They didn't turn up the meeting. They didn't vote against the rates increase. They did nothing, absolutely nothing 
to support families on the breadline. And for all their bluff and bluster about protecting people, when it mattered, they just didn't turn up. And they're not the only party that's guilty of this. Into, for all the protestations, didn't turn up either. Uh, so that being said, we support the motion. Uh, we support calls for wealth tax. We support calls for an inflation busting uh, wage increases because families right across this city and district are suffering. And today's further increase in firmus energy prices has added even more misery. So I would like to re reiterate this council's call on the community minister to accelerate the rollout of the energy support scheme, uh, which is the £200 payment, uh, and it needs to be extended to every individual on tax credits. That was a key output of uh, the governance and strategic planning um, earlier this month, and it needs to happen as a matter of urgency. So thank you. Thank you for that question. So far, Alderman Tavenny. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, allowing me in. Uh, and look, uh, uh, I'm just going to reiterate what the previous speaker had just said. Um, people before profit uh, and others um, were not able, didn't attend the rates meeting, um, the, the striking of the rates. Uh, and, you know, these concerns could have been raised then. And I think if people before profit and others were listening to Alfie Dalit, uh, when we were talking about the finances and around the rates, it had been very, very clear why it was difficult to touch that three million reserves because that is to hopefully to recuperate uh, in time to come. You know, keeping our rates at a level that that we can afford and that we are able to deliver services on the ground very clearly, very vital services, our bins and cleansing and many, many others looking after our parks and stuff to get there, uh, and you know, um, covering our jobs. And we talk about, you know, wage or salaries, you know, pay for good pay for everyone. You know, when we look at the, our salaries uh, uh, across the council, uh, you know, if people for profit need to have, you know, listen to that there. And, you know, we have wage increases, maybe not just what we would like them to be, but there is a wage increase there. Uh, and we know times have been difficult. But, you know, when we hear um, increased corporation tax, increased corporation tax, what happens? Jobs will go. I can assure you that what will happen because many businesses are many businesses are on the brink. Uh, 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 could be on the brink of collapse. And you know, increased taxes and stuff like that. There's well, well, good. But somebody has to pay for it somewhere. And mayor, look, we will not be supporting the amendment or the 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 notice of motion here because we believe that we as a council we've been very prudent and uh, uh, um, making sure that three million pound reserves there uh, is for you know for the procedure of looking after our services and protecting our workers within council with their pay raises and their salaries thanks mayor thank you thank you for that other than the venue okay members uh i see no more members that please speak here so i'm going to pass them now on to john they take us through a vote on the amendment john thanks mayor alderman breslin Against Alderman Devaney. Against John. Alderman Guy. Alderman Hussey. Against. Alderman Carrigan. Against John. Alderman McClintock. Against John. Alderman McCready. Alderman McCready. Alderman Ramsey. Against. Alderman Wark. Against. Councillor Jason Barr. Barr. Councillor Raymond Barr. Barr. Councillor John Boyle. Barr. Councillor Michaela Boyle. Barr, John. Councillor Carr. Four, John. Councillor Cusick. Four. Councillor Dobbins. Four, John. Councillor Donnelly. Four. Councillor Doyle. Four. Councillor Duffy. Four. Councillor Edwards. Four, John. Councillor Farrell. Four. Councillor Ferguson. Four, John. Councillor Fleming. Four, John. Four, John. Councillor Gallagher. Four. Councillor Harkin. Four. Councillor Heaney. Four, John. Councillor Jackson. Four, John. 
Answer Kelly. Or John. Answer Luke. John. Answer McGinley. Or John. Answer McGowan. Or John. Answer McGuire. Councillor Maguire. Councillor McHugh. Councillor McHugh. <clears throat> Councillor McKeever. Four. Councillor McKinney. Four. Councillor Mooney. Four. Councillor O'Neill. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sinai Barr. John. Councillor Tierney. Four, John. Thank you, members. And that's, I've recorded 34, seven against, and no abstentions, so the amendment passes. Thank you for that, John. Okay, members, come back to the extension motion. I see no further speakers, so I'd like to bring in Councillor Hargan now to sum up. Councillor Hargan. Thanks, Mayor. Look, I think uh, this sums up um, the state of things right now. MLAs are giving themselves a £500 pay increase uh, before this government mandate ends, and people right across our society don't have the money to keep their electricity on, to keep the house warm, and to put food on the table. And yes, there's some stuff that's been done. It's just not enough. And not enough has been demanded from the British government. Um, and not enough is being done by Stormont. Food banks in this city are saying that they're seeing a 300% increase in use. And I think that, the, as somebody else said, that most of the political establishment parties are completely out of touch with what's happening. Um, and we will see when we bring this proposal again for an emergency uh, hardship fund who backs it, because that will determine whether or not people are serious about doing everything that they can to protect people, to protect workers and the vulnerable, to protect farmers that can't put enough food uh, on the table for themselves. Now, the SDLP have some cheek, um, and it's interesting that they spend more time attacking the smaller parties than the bigger parties. Uh, it tells you everything about their election strategy, and people can see right through what they've done on rates. They've spent 20 years increasing rates in Derry and in, in the district, giving us the highest rates across the north. All across the north, they vote for rates increases. Um, and here, they opportunistically um, and cynically um, try to blame everybody around them uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for a rates increase. So people can see through this, uh, and people can see through it because you don't turn up the rallies uh, against uh, the fuel poverty crisis. Um, and so you'll be welcome along, of course, to the next one. But let's see if you'll come, and let's see if you'll back uh, radical actions that people are taking. Um, we're in a crisis, and I'm it's hard very to clear. Bring your... hasn't done enough. If Business please, hasn't thank done you. enough. And people power is going to be the key to... to uh, uh, bringing about some change. Thank you, thank you for Council Harden. Um, members, um, are we before even even ask John? Are we going to keep the same votes in this on a substantial motion? Is there anybody changing or going different than the way we voted on the amendment? Take well, the vote. Who's that? Sorry, speaking. Alderman Hussey, take the vote. No, it's not your decision, Lord. I'm not saying that you have a second or not. We're against here. The DEP block are, are against, uh, just to clarify our position. Oh, yeah, it's the same as, as previous. Thirty. Okay, members, 30, 34, seven against and no extensions. So the substantial motion passes. Thank you, members. Members, um, thank you for that. My nice to the motions. Um, members, I just really wrote something by you. It was brought up in chairperson's business. Um, tomorrow night, I'll be lighting up the, the council 
buildings, um, obviously in the Ukrainian flag colors, it's basically happened throughout the world. So we'll have council building down here in the city and start band that up tomorrow night on that one. So members moving on to um, agenda 15. Uh, it's all open for information. So agenda 15, 16, 17 and 18 open for information. Any member want to come on? So members, thank you for tonight's meeting and I'm going to call tonight's meeting to an end at 21.40. So um, stay safe members and we'll all see each other very soon in the in the committees. So thank you now. Bye. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Mayor. Thank, thank, you. Mayor. thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mark. Hey, I got a Jipper supporter, don't you? <laughs>